Are you are you honestly ready? Are you kind? Are you we're, moderately we're ready? ready? We're as ready as we're gonna be. I don't see anything written down for your tip. Do you have it in your mind? He doesn't remember what. The I know. What the, is. I know what the tip is. No, you don't. Do you know what the tip is? Do you know okay, what the question 10, is? Okay, ten thousand dollars. Okay. What's the question? <laughs> no, we we talked about it yesterday, so that's okay. I don't know. I honestly don't know the, what it there's is. There's a second. Oh, I, I forgot, no, no, no. I forgot we, the individual. What, what's the uh, woman's Ted, name? Ted. We'll talk about it when we get to it. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. As long as you know, you have, just haven't written anything no, down. No, he's looking for a reminder late of I don't, I don't what have, the question. I, I know what the I know what the question is. We actually okay. talked okay. about the question. Okay, it's too late now. Right. So, so did you guys realize that in the last? It's only too late when you're dead. But oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Did you guys realize in the last three months there have been three six-year-olds who have brought guns to school? Yeah, I heard. I heard about the second I one. I heard about, about the third one. Yeah. yeah. So there's been three in yeah. the last the, three the months. Mother two got, and a half the mother months. got arrested on the yeah. second or third one, yeah. Yeah, including so. the person that yeah, shot. Yeah, including the big one. Yeah. Okay. The, the, yeah. So, so in that in the two and a half months, and this is just what you've heard of, three six year olds have brought guns to school. See, I, I'm I'm out of the loop. I don't know. But it doesn't. I, it, but know. I want you to think about that. It's it's not like we're saying like three high school kids. It's not like we're saying like like I don't know three eighth graders. These are three, first graders. These are first graders. Yeah. yeah. These are first graders. Crazy, yeah. yeah. And and if they're not that bright, they're they're still in kindergarten. Yeah. Well, I mean, back. It, I don't know. Well, it's perfect because like so they're not going to get in trouble no matter what. I mean, the parents are going to get in trouble, you know. So they, they shouldn't the gun shouldn't be accessible yeah, how, to the kids. How how in your life how easy are, are random people? I know there's three 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 six six year olds out of million. There's probably twenty million, thirty million yeah. six year olds. But how can there just be three six year olds? In that short amount of time, you know, they just had just, access to guns. It's just, I mean, you know how everything comes in threes, like celebrity deaths come in threes. That's what just happened. It, it came in threes. What? It came in threes. Like, usually when a celebrity dies, there'll be like two others that die within yeah, like the next know, couple of months. Yeah, you know, this seems to be a bit on Everything comes here. in threes. Everything comes in threes. Well, well, here's what I'm worried about. Is it that, or should we start being afraid of six-year-olds? I mean, is this the new... I mean, everything's kind of getting younger, no, right? We, They're we learning should, things. We should be afraid of parents who have six-year-olds who obviously don't know how to secure a gun. And here's my next question. is like, okay, you have a gun. Wouldn't you know where that gun is at all times? So wouldn't you, when, when you're the parent, you wake up in the morning and you put, obviously you put the gun somewhere where a six-year-old can get it. So that means you should be able to at least see where it is. And wouldn't you just, you see it's on the dresser and then you look and the kids go off to school and you look on the dresser and the gun's gone. And wouldn't you put two and two together? Here, I will, I will top that right now. Oh, ready? There is a student... <laughs> From Howard University, not not Howard Street in University, yeah. but Howard <laughs> University, which okay. is a predominantly black, all African American college. Right? I think it's an H, H, yeah, historically, yeah, yeah historically black. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, in yeah. the D.C. area, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she came up with a cool invention, okay, um, and the people are touting it as a possible way to have less gun violence, okay. So the gun goes on a pad, right, and um, when the gun is on the pad, um, you have a little app on your phone, and it says, "Hey, guns on the pad, everything's cool." If someone takes the gun off of this pad, it says, hey, your gun has just been used in a murder. <laughs> but no, it says that's a great idea. It says the gun is the no, gun is a, right, yeah. Gun, yeah. the it gun be, is not like, on the pad. It should anymore. be like a re, like uh, like w- that home uh, uh, monitoring thing. Like like you have the monitoring thing on your phone, and then if there's like the, nothing happens, but if there's movement in your house, it goes. Ooh, it gives you like an alert. Yeah, so there should be like an app for that. Well, here I have a there better be an idea. App for that. There's a thing that like you can keep money in it. You can keep. I think it's called a safe. That's where you keep the gun. Like a gun safe? Don't keep it on a fucking charging pad <laughs> that anybody could grab it. I yeah, mean, but that's then the you can't. thing I ever heard in my life. But what if a burglar breaks in? You now can't you're grab just it incur- from shooting people. Now you're encouraging people to leave the gun out where anybody can get it, but you'll know when it's. But well, at least have a lock on the on the trigger. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, assuming. That, I mean, yeah, because yeah. you can't. I mean, if you know, it's like a low jack. I mean, or like that. That what, what's oh, the greatest club? The, the club on no, your they car. They have gun locks. The club, club yeah. for the car yeah. for the gun. Yeah, the club for that the gun. Awesome. I have actually. I have a gun lock. Yeah, but I don't have a gun. Okay, that's good. Oh, <laughs> I'm not wait, joking. Wait, I, I, I have a shitload of loaded guns. I was supposed to go. I was supposed to start yeah. skeet shooting with my in-laws. So for Christmas one year, I got all the accessories because I was going to go get the gun once I got my Foyd card, but I never did. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. But one thing I know about these sixth graders with guns. Uh, six-year-old. Not sixth grade. Six, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's First graders, six-year-olds, yeah. This isn't trending, right? They don't follow the news, so they're not, like, following what another six. Uh, year old all, everybody did has or, a smartphone, right? I mean, yeah, but do you think what kind that, of dork? What kind of dork six year old doesn't well, well, have a well, smartphone? Not like tic- so, do you think? Tic- I mean, listen, it's not like this... a TikTok challenge where where they're stealing Kias and Hyundai's because they found some cheat code to break into those cars because it's how, easier. How right? do we so, know six year olds aren't doing? But that? hang on, this <laughs> they, is what I'm trying to say. Bringing if, guns to school. If this was, if these were high school students, you know that there's this collective community, or they're plugged in, they're, they're seeing the news, right? I mean, yeah. do you? Are we at the point now where first graders are are following? 
new stories like it's this? Co- it's just a coincidence. Okay, hold on. I'll, I'll, I think I'll, it's a I'll coincidence this, too. No, but no. I'm interested to hear. In, in why, a serious, are, why is it six years? In a serious vein, kids that young. I'll bet you dime to a dollar. Here, when we go into a restaurant, Teddy and I were just talking about this. When we go into a restaurant, and you go into a restaurant, how many I times know. do you see a family? I know. And three, four, five, six year olds are all on right. their uh, on their devices, right? All sorts of stuff pops up on there. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying it's magic. It's not like they have a news feed. But it, there could be. What if, you, I mean, there's there's stuff that you do. What if it's like, hey, what if they show like a brand new shiny why. gun and a kid's just like, damn, I want that, man. I mean. Well, actually, I, the common story is. kids you know, talk it, like that? Actually, you know. actually, you know what I've seen before? So the kid like gets access to like the, the parent's phone and then they go on Apple and they buy like thousands of dollars this worth of to Ted, merchandise so you know yeah this. so or they go or they you know this actually happened to me years ago so my kid when she was young she, i got her a game uh, like a free game on apple whatever and then but there's an in-app purchase that you could do where you buy like you know 400 coins that only per, you know it, it's not real it just it's just right. for that game yeah. and she spent like a hundred dollars yeah and then i think i contacted apple and i said obviously nobody in their right mind would buy you know a five-year-old you know or a six-year-old a hundred dollars worth of you know re- real money. And did worth they say of you're absolutely wrong? I can I can cite thousands and thousands of, of things where, where parents do this to keep their kids quiet and just let them do it because they're not paying attention because they're on their phones spending a thousand dollars per coins instead of a hundred dollars. I actually got an automated message. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I'm saying I mean I, I mean it's it's possible that kids can see all this stuff. I mean it's all over the place. Could a kid see that? Sure. And could absolutely. that be a, a a factor in them saying? Hey, if that kid can bring a gun to school, I can bring a gun to school. Well, it's not that easy. They have to have access to the gun first and foremost. So it's just this, I don't know, it's it's just crazy. I don't know how there are that many households where the gun is that accessible, and then it's a thing that kids that young are gaining access to it, and then it's a whole other yeah. level where they're actually leaving the house with it, yeah. and it's a whole other thing that they're bringing it to fucking yeah. school. Well, well, I mean, it's just it's well, insane think, to think, think about, the, about perfect, the odds of that. The perfect confluence of it events is. that has to happen. First of all, you have to be a negligent parent to leave a gun out, obviously, where a six-year-old That's can get it. That's what we're talking about. That's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. And, and then and number two... To, to be completely tone deaf and oblivious, where let's just say you leave the gun on the dresser, okay? You could have it, obviously, if you know where it is, the kid knows where it is. So then, like I said, the gun all of a sudden is gone, and the kid's gone, and you know, obviously, the gun didn't. You know, assuming nobody broke in the house, you have to assume the kid took the gun. But you know, the parents doesn't put, uh, put two and two together. You know? that, are you saying that this whole thing is crazy? Yeah, you mean like, okay, what, Mark kind of what, like what Mark said. said. Well, it's negligent. So it's just, what, that's, that's, point it's just negligent made. parental. Can I make a point? Negligent parental. You know, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> But here, it's not rocket science, you know. If, if <laughs> imagine, imagine this: if it just happened, if three six-year-olds in the last six months, two and a half, two and a half months, two Jesus and a half Christ. Months. So let's say two and a half months, three six-year-olds showed up at school with a gun. Imagine how many kids are not showing up to school with the gun. Imagine how many kids. All are, the rest of them? No, I mean, <laughs> but how many households have to have these guns that are accessible in the first place? Right. Right. It has to be tenfold. Oh, yeah. This is just a small portion well, of the kids not, that let's, happen to let's, get the gun and happen to leave the house with the gun. Yeah. How many times do the kids get the actual well, gun but don't leave the let's house Let's not forget, with too. It? Let's not forget, too. Oh, I see. Getting caught before they even have a yeah. chance to do right. it. Or or could do it if they wanted to, but they're choosing not to. These kids may be the extreme behavioral or have something wrong with them, and there might be a bunch of other kids who see, I was told not to touch that. I won't touch it. Wait, but, are you? Are you are you honestly saying that a kid who would take a gun, a six year old who would take a gun to school, has something wrong with them? Don't don't. I don't think I think you're slut shaming six year olds who like guns. I mean, there's a lot well, of really I mean, cool I, guns. Well, they probably I take offense. Well, to well, that well they're probably term. you know, well, kids, you know, when kids, <laughs> you know, they have the label. Fan, they have the fantasy reality. So they when they see a gun, they probably think cowboys and Indians. A gun is cool because they don't understand <laughs> the consequences. You know, seriously, they don't understand the consequences of what a gun can do. So when you're you're six, the only one who still brings up the concept of cowboys and Indians. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, when you're a kid, you know, obviously, oh, you know, like if you see something like shiny and new, it's like different. You 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 know, as a kid, you gravitate. No, you're towards, right. Yeah, you yeah. gravitate toward. And well, my other point was this: What about the kids who did bring guns to school, but we just never heard about it because it wasn't reported to the news? Yeah, that's, that's possible too. So. That's that's the thing that kind of scares me, right? I mean, there's probably a bunch. It's, it's probably happened, right? And they nobody wants that. Nobody wants negative publicity. I oh, guarantee you, you know where it happened. That. It happened more. It's going to happen more in a red state. That's the news they don't want getting out. The, and I always forget: is red Republican? Yeah, suppo- supposedly. Sure. Supposedly. Oh, so yeah, more, blue more, is Democrat, red is Republican. Yeah, they supposedly. said they said something about more. I just read something. Uh, uh, there's more gun crime um, in in southern states. There's more shootings in southern states or something like that. Because, I mean, here, here's the thing. This is what happens when you get involved with guns. Uh, I, we'll take our buddy John Morant. 
who has made several mistakes in his life. Yeah. So he decided to go to a strip club and make a make well, a. Was it a strip club? Yeah, oh, yeah. of course, he's, he's of course it was. Because it's funny they said they said he was in the Glendale area. Was Pac was, and, Pac, was Pac Man Jones with him? No. So <laughs> so the Glendale area is known for two things: strip clubs and shopping malls. Okay, so he brings a gun. He makes his video. And this is the bad. This is the really bad part about it because uh, John Morant's made a, again a lot of bad choices in his life. Okay, yeah. but this is he had to be he had to be slut shamed by Plaxico Burris. Plaxico Burris came out I think yesterday or the day Damn, before. Slut shaming thing again? I, is that what I'm, I mean? Shamed? I don't know. Whatever it is. Yeah. But Plaxico Burris came out and and said to made a little video for John Morant. Right? He puts it on social media. Says, "Don't make the same mistakes I made, <laughs> like putting your gun in a sweat pan, in your sweatpants <laughs> and, <laughs> and letting it fall down and shoot you in the foot." Yeah. Well, then the funny thing, Paul Pierce, the former uh, Boston Celtics player, came out with an with, with uh, an announcement like in his defense, quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> so did Jalen Jalen Rose did the same thing. Yeah. In his defense. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jalen Rose and Paul Pierce said it's okay that he was in a strip club. No, 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 no. They're no. Without going They're to, not condoning without the without behavior. To, They're basically saying I was there, been there, done that, man. Yeah. You need to clean oh, it up. Oh, oh. You said he said in his defense. No, yeah, because Paul Pierce, I guess what happened to him. Kind of saying or, he made a mistake. He, no, he didn't say that. He was basically sticking up for him, but basically Paul Pierce was his own experience, I guess he got beaten up in a, he in got a, in a, in a bar, yeah, like, like when he, in 2020. Times in the back. Yeah, he yeah. got stabbed and like beaten up pretty good. So yeah. I guess he said after that he would carry a gun himself. Oh, oh, I see. So he was but, like but not not go to those places and stay safe. Yeah, but he was carrying a gun like Dancing with it or something, right? I mean, he's yeah, showing he was, it. Uh, was no, he really, went to a, I mean, yeah, he went to a nightclub. It was really, it's really not, such not really, a. It's bad. not really self defense stuff, you know. He's just no. Doing I it just, yet. I just feel like if you got all that money, you are really making a mistake putting yourself out there to, to just get. I mean, if you start showing a gun, that means other people in that, that that strip club or that bar or whatever have a gun, man. You start acting like that, and some people just take offense to that. And then there you go. This is one more guy who's who's you know. Well, what, what, I mean, what are they saying? I mean, with a with a gun expert, I, I'm, a, I'm paraphrasing, but like when you take out a gun, you better be prepared to use it. Right. Well, that's I mean, what you a just, couple you people you said just, too. You, when just, you, you just take it out for fun. Right. No, you when you have a fun. gun like that and you're out like that, yeah, you, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, I I I, I 100% believe that. That is that is why I don't wear sweatpants. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. But Ted wears sweatpants all the time, so he's about locked and loaded. <laughs> You're packing. All right, um, let's go ahead and get this uh, get this monkey started. This monkey off my back. Let's get this slut shaming show started. No, I isn't that how, isn't that the word slut shaming? Isn't that like when you? I, I don't, that doesn't apply to everything. <laughs> well, apparently oh. it does now. <laughs> so, wait, so, like Ted, so if Ted misses a pot. And that's apropos because I watched him miss a lot of putts yesterday. I, and I say, I say, nice job. Am I, I'm not slut shaming him. I don't understand. Maybe I don't understand just what being, the just phrase be, just means. Just being passive aggressive. That's all. Okay. All <laughs> right. Same thing. Hey everybody, my name is Matt, and this is the Real Three Idiots podcast. With me, as always, is the voice of his generation, Mark. Not you, Ted. I was just about to step in and say thank you, uh, but he wasn't uh, talking to me. No, no. <laughs> and the reason we can't have nice things, Teddy. <laughs> At least leave him out. We can't leave him out when he comes in. Yeah, yeah. We oh, can yeah. have he's nice a, things. He's a breaker. Put it away. Teddy, I feel like you. I feel like you're definitely a breaker. Like oh, you just walk around when you were kids, down. when you had certain toys that you put away if your one guy was coming over. Yeah, because or, one guy was <laughs> always a jag off, right? And he would always just rip the head off. You're like, I got this new robot, and he would just rip the head off your. No, robot. I wasn't that. I wasn't that kid. I wasn't that kid. I like toys. You know, I mean, I, I actually had Micronauts when I was a kid. I had a Commodore. Did you? 64. I love those things. I wish I would have kept them as a collector's item. They're so cool. Oh, that's, man. you know what? That's yeah. weird. Don't, don't do that. Well, only don't, in the package. Those are so cool. Yeah. No, I would never yeah. break that. I mean, because it was tough to get a toy back in the day when I was a kid. So the last thing I was going to oh, do yeah. is break it. It was Christmas you know? or your birthday. I mean, you, I, I don't know how yeah. it works now. Yeah. Like, I see kids just like, like, they it was once, toys. It was once, it was once a year. Yeah. It was definitely once a year. Yeah. And yeah. you had to make Twice. it count. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, well, we had we had Christmas. You have but, you're, uh, you're Jewish, uh, so uh, no. you had not Christmas. Every no, every day is Christmas for you. So I yeah, guess it well, matter. yeah, that's, it, that's 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 the funny thing. But yeah, that was it. The only time you got presents was birthday, and 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 well, I guess if you did well in school, but I never did, so that, nah, that, that was no, not that, that, that was not an option. option. That was never I was an option. I was super below average, so yeah, there was no there was no special gifts for uh, any excelling at anything. <laughs> it was just you know, I, you know what? I, I always say oh that, I always God. say that I was just lucky enough to score well on standardized tests. To not end up in, in in the on the short bus and in a room with like seven kids. That's the only thing that kept me from being in there because I did nothing in school. I was absolutely the worst. I I, I tell everybody this. I, it's funny that I'm a teacher because I was the worst student of all time. Well, you know what? C's get degrees too. That's all I know. Yeah, that was my mantra. Yeah, C, C's were a step up from where I was for a long time. Do you mean like you weren't 
a good student grade wise, or you just yeah, were I just a good didn't do anything. like a person wise. Like, uh, all, all of the above. Really? Yeah, check, check. You yeah. were like a shithead in the classroom. Teachers I, didn't like you. No, I. You know what? I wasn't the worst. Like I wasn't the kid who, like, we, oh man, we had some really bad kids. I wasn't the kid who like found the uh, the big jar of paint, like the quart of paint, and took the top off and then threw it out the window. Like six of them out the window. Yeah. Like while the oh, teacher yeah. was sitting at the desk I never, doing, I, I, I don't never, know what. I never did that. Yeah. yeah. So she did that, but I was the kid. I was the kid, right? Who found the paint. And opened up the cabinet so that he could grab it and throw it out. Oh, yeah, nice. I was a kid. I was like, somebody should throw this out, and I knew <laughs> immediately that there would have been somebody. Yeah, without so, me, so, no one would have so, found. So you were like a facilitator. I was absolutely <laughs> like, like I was the world's worst. Like an yeah. assist. It's like you're the point guard. You assisted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Player, I'm like I'm not going to kill anybody, but here's a gun. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. Matt yeah. the enabler. Yeah. I was. I was. I was not good, man. I, it's a shame because I always wonder. No, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Teddy, your tip for today because, uh, oh, that's perfect timing. Your tip today, um, oh, I got to sing. We got to sing and I got to do my thing. I almost went to, damn. Who's got to sing? You got to sing and I got to do my sponsor. Yeah. Holy shit. I almost gave it away. You got to do your sponsor. Uh, Yeah. Then I got to sing. Yeah. Can can I sing with you sometime? Mm. Is that possible? I'm just going to make something up, so. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Yeah. And by the way, when you say you're making something up, that's not true. He puts a lot of work into this, man. I know he does. And I, listen, I, I did don't. too. Appreciate I don't. It. I, oh, okay. Well, I do when I make them. Okay, so let's do this. <clears throat> Excuse me. From Pipe Dream Golf comes what the entire golfing world is talking about, the inconceivable driver. This new driver will always go straight, always go far, and always land just where you want it. No more playing with other lousy drivers that can slice, hook, or pop straight up into the air. The inconceivable driver will never, ever do any of those things. Are you a great golfer? A good golfer? Total shit. It doesn't matter. The inconceivable driver from Pipe Dream Golf never hits a poor shot. The game of golf has changed forever. And if you want some more great news from the team at Pipe Dream Golf, they're working on two new things to make your game even better. Coming soon is the implausible wedges for perfect wedge play every time guaranteed and the impossible putter. Go to pipe go to pipe dream golf today and change your golf life forever. That's funny. You know what? That's fucked up because they already have those clubs that played against sports. Nope. No, these are brand new. I know. This is a brand new tournament. New, I already, I already, it's impossible. I already bought a club that supposedly it, is supposed to splice the fairway every time an ice mother hooked it out of bounds. So I want my money back. Because you're the Ted worst wants one of those <laughs> drivers that, that, that uses the trees to get back into the fairway. <laughs> I saw a little bit of that That's yesterday. It wasn't me, though. Yeah, we, had, we actually played yesterday with a kid. He did. And he, yeah. and he hit the ball, he right? And this is, this is how you know it's funny, right? So he hits the ball and it hits a tree and it rolls back in. And I go, oh my God, that was awesome. And he goes, what? I go, I go, you. You plan to hit that tree, right? And he, it was great. He looks at me. He goes, "He goes, no, that was that was by accident." I'm like, "Oh, oh!" I go, "I thought you planned to hit it and have it roll into the fairway." And he was great. He goes, "He goes, no, no, yeah." That was the same kid when we told him about the story. We told him about the show because whenever we're out golfing with people, we tell him about the show. So we told him about the show, right? We're talking. That's your marketing budget. Whatever yeah, you spend exactly, on yeah, golf, exactly, yeah. yeah. And so, so Ted and the other kid walk off to the side, and I'm walking with this kid. He's a very nice kid, and he goes, "I guess he goes." He goes so, what kind of show is it? I go, "It's a comedy show," you know. And he goes, "I guess he goes." Well, and he points over at Ted. He goes, oh, "That guy's pretty funny." He goes, "But uh, what do you do?" And I'm just <laughs> no like, way. "Yes, he did. Yes, he did." I'm just like, I'm "Like, are you?" Are you shitting me? He literally see they nice don't get your humor. Kid. They don't get your humor. Yeah. They don't get you. Well, this is when he offered. So he, you got slut shamed. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Teddy. Teddy offered. So at the turn, he offers to buy a couple of beers for these guys. And honestly, I couldn't tell. I found out that they were in their twenties, right, yeah. early twenties. But I couldn't tell Tough if they were. Or, I couldn't yeah. tell if they were under twenty-one yeah. or not. I go. I go, Teddy. I go. You can't just go ahead and buy <laughs> beers. I go. No. I go. You can't just go ahead and buy beers and thongs for people we just meet on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. They say. They, they say. Laugh. They say absolutely nothing. Yeah. And then, then soon after, that was when he's like, when he says to Teddy, he goes, "Yeah, he's funny. Uh, what do you do?" <laughs> yeah. I, so that's why you guys don't invite me to golf anymore because it's one less person you can market the show to. Yeah, that's okay. it. I get it. All right. You're no, taking, you're, you're see t- now that I could live yeah. with. Okay. All right. Sing yeah. your song. You're golfing with us next time. We're not uh, saying you're a liability. No, We're just saying golf. that. You better say yes. <laughs> the next time we ask, you better yeah. say yes. All right. You ready? Okay. Come and listen to some tips by a man named Ted. Poor Illinois seemed to drink a lot of lead. Then one day he was looking for some brew. And that's when things got a little too crude. Matt walked in, that is. Podcaster. Golden Pops. 
Well, next thing you know, old Ted's on the air. Matt Kin folk said, Ted, move away from there. In the basement's a place he oughts to go. So he ended up his thoughts, and this is where he blows. Hot air, that is. Tips for you, Whoa. tips for me. It's time for Ted's tips. Y'all listen up now, you hear? That's pretty good. Dude, that is incredible. Probably. I cannot believe the people on social media think you're an idiot. I got a second verse. No, second no, verse. we're not doing that. Oh, no, there's more. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's, okay. Listen, yeah. leave them wanting more, right? right? Do a Costanza. I'm out. I'm out. You left on a high note. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Teddy, your tip from today is Mickey, and he is from snowy California. Yeah, I guess it's snowy it now. snowy, yeah. Uh, his sister is getting married for the second time in two years, and she's having another huge wedding. Okay. Another. Another huge wedding. These are his words. The first marriage lasted six months, and he gave her a big gift. Uh, She asked him for money, actually $10,000 to help throw the new wedding. Um, He has the money, but wants no part in giving her the money or going to her second wedding. How can he get out of it? And here's the trick, without being a total dick. This is Mickey. Mickey is the one who has to give the $10,000. Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, his sister is getting married. Yeah. So not not, not the fiancé. Mickey's... On the possibly on the hook for the ten k. Yeah, the she, she asked okay. him for ten k to 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 throw the wedding. Okay, that kind of changes things. For some reason, I thought it was the the she was asking the the the, the second the bride to be the second time around was asking the fiance for. Oh, cool! Our guest is here. He can hear your tip. Oh, and then probably get ignore, off the zoom. Ignore it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, so this change, kind of changes things. Okay, so statistically, and you're not going to believe me on this, but the larger the wedding, the greater the chances of the divorce within five years. That's statistic. That, that is I know, so un, that's so untrue. So is, is that is that skewed by by like famous people having like a ten million dollar wedding and then literally you know like eighth their eighth and ninth wedding? I mean that doesn't even make any yeah. sense. Now I'm not saying this woman's a bridezilla. <laughs> two she, two weddings in yeah. two weddings in two years. But but she has a lot of earmarks of a bridezilla. <laughs> you know, all, okay. all the signs Ted, are there. How does he not give her the money and not go to the wedding? <laughs> well, let's, let's easy. focus well, on well, this. Okay, it's easy. Okay, so the, the worst thing that could happen is. <laughs> The worst thing that could happen, because he's the brother, the worst thing is, so number one, I don't know their relationship, if they're close, not close. Obviously, she has the chutzpah to ask this guy for $10,000, and sounds like he has $10,000. Number he one, does. he's not obligated <laughs> to give her jack squat, because he's the brother. He's not obligated. You know, it's her choice. You know, whatever this life decision she decides to make, she's free to make it. But to put that burden on him, that's not his responsibility at all. Let's just say he doesn't do it in a very polite way. What what you gonna do? Not invite him to the wedding? Is that the worst thing? Ted, Ted, I, I think you're missing the focus the, the whole, on this. The, yeah. How does he tell her? Oh, how does he tell her? No, I without see. being a dick. It's his question. Are you? Are you? Not, asking... I gave you a week for this, and you don't even know the. Guy. Yeah. Okay. The way the way oh. he tells her is just say you know um you know uh, dearest sister whatever her name is dearest, dearest. Uh, let's just call her uh, Janice. <laughs> Janice. Just, just Janice. Okay. Uh, let's call her Karen. Let's call her Karen. <laughs> no, you know what? I, I don't like that. There's I'm, nice people I'm, named I'm Karen. Kidding, I'm kidding. I said I, uh, that freaks me yeah. out. But how does he do it, Ted? Janice. Um, with all due respect, you yeah, have started ever since with, with, all all due, with all due respect, <laughs> you know, uh, money's tight at this time. And even though I do have some money, I have it earmarked for something else, uh, for some personal use. And therefore I cannot, uh, I can't let it. She's, she, he's, she's asking. Wait, can we role play this? Can we role play this real fast? Sure. What do you have it earmarked for? <laughs> that's, that's me being Janice. Uh, just personal, you know, for my family, actually, we, we have a, vac- you don't have, have a family. We have a once in a lifetime vacation. You live plan. by yourself. My, my girlfriend. I just met. Dumped you. <laughs> okay, I have a bad strip bar habit, okay? <laughs> Miss, Miss, M- M- Roxy's there Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, and, you know, she's she's demanding, you know, and those lap dances aren't cheap, Janice. But I don't think you're, I, I don't, I don't think you're, you've helped him at all. I don't think you've given him any way to get out of this in a, in a real way. Yeah. Because if I, you I start a sentence with all due respect, she's probably going to stab you. Yeah, and well, I hope she doesn't listen to this show. Well, well like, well, like I said, that be cr- <gasps> because he's not getting both, off the hook now, dude. What if they both listened? Yeah. What if they both listened and he got screwed on this? Yeah. Well, he's not going to get screwed. I mean, so it's time. For, well, here's, <laughs> he's uh, on the what, path. What, there's no, there's no easy way to put this, but it's time for some tough love. Number one, your sister, you know, with all due respect, has a lot of chutzpah. Even having the gall to ask you for ten thousand dollars, it's not like a hundred dollars or you know, help you know, help me with a down payment or something. I mean, ten thousand dollars. That obviously she has sounds like she has no intention of paying back, so she could ever didn't day. Sound this, like a, it didn't sound like a yeah, loan. It's almost like an obligation because yeah. of, because of the familial you know mm-hmm. bonds or something. But yeah, even if she's close to you, I don't know what what a relationship is, Mickey, with your sister. But yeah, I, I think she's on her own. Obviously, if the fiance or their family wants to foot the bill for this second special occasion, more power to them. Uh, if the biggest thing that happens to you, the biggest repercussion is that you don't get invited to this 
supposedly opulent wedding, which is, you know, I'm assuming 10,000 is just the tip of the iceberg, right? It's just 10,000 from him. And God knows where the rest is coming from, right? Because most weddings are, could be 20, 30,000. I don't know. Banks, I don't know. I have no idea, Ted. I have no idea. I mean, she could have just used, she could have just sold all her gifts from the first wedding (laughs) and then use that to pay for the second wedding. Actually, here's what I do. If if you want to be a good brother, uh, take, here, do this. Take twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, you know, maybe cater some 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 good food and some good drinks. Have an open <laughs> bar in your house or your backyard, and that's a good compromise. You know, host, and, host that's, and, that, and, that, and that's your host gift. It in your condo. And that's your gift. Yeah, host it in your condo in Miami. <laughs> yeah, and that's a good and that's a good gift to your sister. So that's so in a way you kind of kill two birds with one stone. So you've given a, you've given a wedding present to your sister without spending. You know, a ton of because if you just give her the money, God knows what she's going to use it for. It might just be for floral arrangements because just the flowers alone could cost ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Take twenty five hundred dollars, have a tiki bar in your backyard, go to the but park. She doesn't want that wedding. She wants she wants to have a huge wedding and she wants money. And well, you haven't helped him at all. Well, you know what? I want to be the center fielder of the New York Yankees, but I'm not. So sometimes we don't get what we want. Okay, so 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 Mike, you you heard all this. Right? I want to be a scratch golfer, Mike, but I'm not. So I'm yeah. sorry, <laughs> Mike. Did you did you hear all that? I heard bits and pieces of that. I just stepped away for Thank a second. God. Okay. Thank do, God. Do, do you have a Mike? Do you have a sister? I do have a sister. Yeah. Okay. That's funny. I, I've known Mike for six years, and I, I've never asked him anything about his family. So that that is that is interesting. <laughs> uh, Mike, do you have ten fingers? Th- no, I'm just kidding. All right. So so Ted, you've helped no one. No, so, I, I just so, I just helped him. I just said you politely say no. I said I I can't afford it financially. I'm using the money for something else. She knows she can. Well, just because she knows she can doesn't mean she doesn't know for sure. She, Okay, how about this? Mark, are you ready? I'm going to help. I, I, Mickey, can, Mickey, yeah. tell your sister <laughs> tell your sister that if she averages a wedding every two years, you don't have the money to fund it, okay? <laughs> yeah. That you're busy that weekend, and uh, that she doesn't have to bring a gift when you get married. How's that? Well, that's a good one. Yeah. How, I mean, is that a little bit better? It, it's, it's, it's on the right path. You know, but I said, Thanks, hey, Ted. take twenty five hundred dollars of the ten thousand and offer it a host like you know, t- you know, rent rent a uh, space in like a botanical garden she, or a park. Why, but she doesn't want that. Ted, she's planning a wedding. You can't plan someone else's wedding for her. But you could offer alternative alternative solutions, and that's what he's doing. Without you know, with, in a nice way. You're not saying no. You can't have ten thousand dollars. You're saying I, I can't really do ten thousand because this is your second wedding. You don't have to you know because you don't want to rain on her parade, of course, because the implication is that well, your first one didn't work out. So what makes you think this one's going to work out? We, we right. just lost a listener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor poor Mickey. But you know what? I need some tips on my golf game. Okay. Well, if you need some tips on your golf game, that is fantastic news because we are finally doing our golf show. Yes. And, yes, and Ted will be slut-shamed. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to use that term. That, I feel like I use I that term wedge, right. Wedge chain. Wedge, wedge, wedge shamed. shamed. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I've taken a lot of slut sl- walks of shamed off the yeah. first tee to the ladies' tee box and the second tee box and hit second and third shots from there. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, Ted oh, invented oh, the so breakfast don't forget, ball. Oh, so don't forget the uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones story. Don't, t- don't say it now. Let me introduce our guest, but don't forget that. Okay. Our guest today is Mike Stone. He is a PGA teaching pro at Glenview Park Golf Club just outside of Chicago. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. Welcome, Mike. Welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Please How tell me. Doing, please tell me you didn't see our swings. <laughs> I am doing, by our swings. I mean my swing that Matt yeah, just sent. I am doing very well, and I I know Mike is a good teacher because I have seen him teaching. Okay. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him do his thing, and he knows I'm a great teacher because even though he's never seen me, I tell him I'm great. Right. So he just knows that. <laughs> or he could just be agreeing, on, agreeing with you out of politeness. <laughs> Oh, man. So, Mike, we are super excited about this because the golf show is, I mean, there's so much to talk about when you talk about golf. And I, I know, you know, it's probably some people that's like, oh, man, you know, golf is so esoteric and everything. But it's not. Golf is part of everything in golf is really important in life. <laughs> Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, you can pretty much apply uh, your golf game to your personality in life. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> So, so Ted is a drunk, <laughs> and would you say that his swing? We're, we're both very handicapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No kidding. Now you've seen all of our swings. Would Ted's swing remind you of a drunk person? Um, <laughs> I don't know about a drunk I was, person. I was sober when I took those swings. <laughs> no. By the way. Oh, okay. Mike, Mike is going to be nice. Okay, so Mike, how long have you been teaching people to be better at golf? Uh, total teaching about twenty years now. Holy cow! How many lessons? Over, while, how many, how many lessons would you say over? The, I mean, you know, because do how many lessons do you like give per week? And if you extrapolate that over years, like probably thousands of lessons, I'm guessing, right? So, uh, yeah, it's it's a few. I mean, I do a lot more, of course, in the summertime versus the wintertime. But um, 
you know, summertime I'm teaching 10, 12 lessons a day, wow. uh, six days a week. Man. So it, it, it adds up. Yeah. That is, that is well, crazy. I've seen a lot. Yeah. All right. So, so what would you say your best advice to Tiger Woods was? I mean, you were his personal teacher for a while or were we just one of the, on the crew? <laughs> <laughs> You would have won a couple more if I was. Oh, man. yeah, no kidding. I'd be like, hey, Mike, uh, can you come on? you like, no, I, I taught Tiger Woods, man. Have you ever, you know what, that's a good question. Have you ever taught anybody that's gone on to be famous or, or was kind of famous? Um, probably not famous, but I've taught players that have gone on to compete um, somewhat professionally, like uh, Illinois, uh, Illinois Open, some high-level Junior national tournaments. I had a player once uh, go to the um, drive chip putt finals that they hosted at Augusta. Oh, nice. nice. No way. Nice. A kid? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he was a kid at that time, 14. Nice. Wow, that man. I can't even get a damn ticket to go watch people play. <laughs> oh, man, that is awesome. Okay, so what sport, and I know you've been doing this for a long time, what sport makes it easier to play golf? Like, are baseball players better? Are hockey players better? Is there is there a thing? You know, I don't know that a sport necessarily helps, but I have noticed that hockey players are strong hitters. Like, they hit the ball a long ways. They have some power. Baseball players, it, it tends to – it kind of messes with their golf swing a little bit, the, the, the difference between the two. But hockey players definitely hit the ball a long ways when I think about it. All right. All right. So what's easier then, teaching kids or teaching adults? And be honest. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I guess it all depends on the, the kid and the adult. I'd say it's uh, probably a little easier to teach adults than kids. Really? Because I, I would think that, that adults would have completely and totally unrealistic expectations. We just think kids would be more flexible. You know, they're younger, they're flexible. They're more, Sometimes that happens, yeah. 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 Well, here I've I've taken lessons before, and um, you have. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I had to do that. I knew he was going to say that, and I had to say it like that. I'm sorry, dude. Well, I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> yeah, be prepared. So, be prepared for Matt to get super passive aggressive anytime we talk about golfing yeah. accolades. What that doesn't right. involve. Sorry. Matt, yeah, Matt, <laughs> you got under- Yeah, Matt's the best. Okay, go ahead. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Here's where I get confused. I can do good in lessons, and I could I could do really well at the range. <clears throat> when we take it out on a course, that's where things get like fuzzy and it's not all about the swing swing is one thing yeah. uh a lot of it is aim or how to play the game right hitting the ball anybody can learn how to hit the ball but when you put it out into onto the course so i guess my question is do you ever give lessons on the course like do you take somebody out and situational lessons like okay good tee shot now where are you going to yeah. play that where are you aiming here what are you doing this way why are you doing that uh, yeah, we definitely offer that. We can do lessons on the golf course because, you know, that's a great point. It is a uh, different beast to go from the course, or I'm sorry, the range to the course. It's a lot tougher out there on the golf course. And, yeah, a lot of different situations you can get in. Um, targets get smaller out there. Pressure mounts up. You want to play well. And, and uh, yeah, it's just a little tougher. So we, we do take lessons out on the golf course. How does that work when you go out on the course? Do you, I mean, you, there's other golfers out there, right? So you're just with somebody and you're just going through like, like you would normally play. You're playing, you're not playing, they're playing and you're, you're going along with them or you guys are hitting together. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go out with them. Um, a lot of times because we're doing instruction and maybe hitting a couple shots from a, a certain scenario, right. we won't play um, like the hole from start to finish. We'll, we'll, pick up and move on to the next hole so that way we're not holding up pace okay yeah that's, that's smart the main yeah. thing is you can't hold up the the people behind you so it's more just getting into situations out there we don't very rarely do we actually play you know three or four holes straight hitting every shot see i think that's where like for me um personally and then more so i mean i'm 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 done i'm never going to be a great golfer but my kids could be good golfers it's and i think so hard not to talk right now <laughs> well, my my oldest is uh, he's going to be nineteen, and he's got man, he's he's really really good on the range, and he can do a lot of good things on the course, but he can't do a lot of good things all the time consistently putting together for eighteen holes, and it's hard to teach him outside or, or get him instruction outside. It's where he fails is after like four or five holes, and it's just like everything goes to shit because he doesn't know what to do. He's looking at me, and I'm not a good golfer, Mike, and he's like, "What should I do?" And I'm like, "Dude." I, I don't know. 
I don't know how to tell you. I don't know what to do. I guess you got to take another lesson. But he's like, yeah, but that's on the range. This is out here. And I'm like, that's a good point. So you you can arrange for instruction on the course with, with pros like yourself, right? That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'll keep that in mind because it's so, rarely offered. So, you know, real quick, I'll give you a quick example. I don't want to monopolize too much of your time. So I, I golfed the last couple <laughs> of times. Here for. And most of the And most of the guys I golf with are better than me, so I, I don't have a problem with that. So my goal is just <laughs> – Why is this so funny? He's always, I'm sorry. Everyone always you golf with is better than you're you. You're always laughing. Everyone except Turner and so Garvey unplug, are better we than have, you. Can we just, unplug his just his laughing. Mic? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, anyway, listen. So anyway, so, you know, I, I golf with guys better than me. And so it's funny. So I, I have two examples. So I golfed probably a couple of months ago and you know so me and matt got paired up with two guys and they were both very good you know very consistent one guy like i said hit the ball a mile look i mean look like he was going to shoot like you know look like he was going to like birdie or or your par every hole out of nowhere he just literally cold shanks the ball it literally goes like sideways and almost behind him and it, i mean it was like it just came out he didn't even see it. he was looking straight ahead and it just went sideways and i think he did that for about three four holes and then the other day we were golfing with a couple of nice kids same thing, kid hit the ball a long way, super athletic, super flexible. I don't know where all of a sudden he still hits about six, seven irons in a row, just just shanks it terrible. Dead, yeah, just dead out of bounds. And then you know, kind of, then he kind of, you know, he was discombobulated. Then he kind of turned it around. So, so I guess my takeaway is that you know, golf is hard. So even guys who are you know good hand eye coordination and athletic, they're coordinated. It just happens. You know, I mean, sometimes your timing's off by just a little bit, and it just throws everything off, right? Is that his question? No, it's yeah. not a question. No, he never asked questions. No, but, 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 but never so, asked so my, questions. All you do is make statements. So, so my, my question is, were they drinking? <laughs> Well, they should have been. So, so yeah. So it is more of a statement. I'm just. I, so know, it is so, after three beers. Yeah, so yeah. So you know, golf is and hard. You know, thongs. so it's 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 a fluid situation. You're hitting you know long shots, mid shots, touch shots. Still not a question. Okay. So so I so I guess my, so I guess my question is, like, is it more like a mental thing? Because obviously sometimes it's not a physical thing. You know, because sometimes you know it's a confidence thing. Because you know, when I you're, think it. Yeah. You're you right. know, because sometimes you know if I hit the ball bad, it feels like I've never hit the ball good ever, and I'm never going to hit it good again. Until I actually do, you know, and you and you don't know when it's going to come back. You know, you kind of get in that dark place mentally. So, Mike, yeah, <laughs> when you when you're dealing with people, and and they're obviously good, but they're playing poorly, you have to deal with not just their swing, but kind of like their mental thing. Do you help them with that oh, kind yeah. of stuff? Try to. That's uh, that's not always an easy one, but yeah, a lot of people a lot of people have higher expectations than they should when they go out and play and. Um, you know, get too hard on themselves when they hit a bad shot, but it, it happens. Like even the, the best golfers in the world hit the ball in the water and out of bounds sometimes. That's that's true. I watched that full swing at uh, that Netflix thing, that full swing thing. Have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. So so uh, it, it popped up on my Netflix. I haven't seen it yet though. So gee, yeah. it's you I gotta there, watch it. Yeah, it's yeah, part it, of it. It's yeah. crazy. So they they're talking to Brooks Kepka, and it yeah. was right saw, before he went segment, to the yeah. Live Tour. Okay. And he had won, and he had won, and now we had started, and he was losing, but he wasn't like he wasn't like not making cuts or anything. And it was the most. If, if you're a golfer, you have to watch this. It's the most amazing thing. I've never seen a person so negative about their existence. I mean, it was crazy. This is Brooks Kepka, who had literally won a whole bunch of majors, a couple in a row, and now for six or eight months he had been playing poorly, and he's he's being very candid. But it it sounds like it sounds like he's Ted. That's how bad he's talking. Like he's the worst oh, he's, golfer he's of all mic'd time. Up and he's do- he's, he's dogging he, himself he's, as yeah. he's golfing. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Will I ever win again? And his stupid girlfriend is just like, yeah. I have no idea what's going to happen. He's playing so terribly. I'm just like, oh well, that, my god. Well, that's good for your she, golf she, she team, nice right? Tan, though. <laughs> so so I mean, can you uh, when you see that? Is 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 golf a thing where people are, and I'm sure it's like that with a lot of sports, but are people just like insanely negative when they when they deal with with how good they are? Yeah, uh, it can happen. It, it's, I mean, it, it, it's it's a tough one to walk around because you want them to do well, and you're there to to help teach them how to play better and and avoid stuff like that. But when they get negative and and down on themselves, it's it's a tough battle. Have you ever seen anybody melt down on it during? It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Nobody who's ever taken a lesson is gonna listen. But have you ever seen anybody <laughs> melt down like during a lesson and just <laughs> like a had had a cow? Like they just <laughs> lost their shit. I mean, I, I've had some people that have come close, but usually uh, with a couple of drills and exercises, they can start hitting the ball again, and and you can kind of see the the smoke and dissipate a little bit so you bring tissues for when they're crying and stuff do you have i mean like in your back pocket do you have do you have like 
it's okay. it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You could still be Ted. Don't worry about it. You're still going to be able to make Jeez, money off I, of somebody. I've yeah. seen gobblers worse than me. <laughs> I haven't had to break out the tissues Ted. yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so, so actually going back to what you said, you said something interesting before. So why, in your opinion, what, what's the commonality? Why do hockey players, why do they, they hit the ball longer? Like, what, what do they do? Like, what's the fundamental they do? Like, do you think why they hit the ball longer sure. than someone who has baseball training? My, my theory is it, it's, it's more similar to a golf swing. Uh, they're taking a slap shot with the puck off the, the ice where um, I would imagine a hockey stick weighs a little bit more than a golf club and a, a puck is heavier than a golf ball. So they're used to making a, a very similar motion with, with heavier right. equipment. Right. <clears throat> so when they get a golf club in their hand, they can usually swing it pretty fast. See, I was hoping you were going to say, cause they're very rich and they've got great equipment. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's their excuse. No, I think, I mean, I they have $600 drivers. No, right? I've but seen, we know that I, doesn't, that I, doesn't, I've actually played with hockey players that are pretty good. Okay. So we've seen adults throwing clubs around and swearing and acting like lunatics do you see that? I mean, is that is well, not even that. I know you've seen it. Is it something you think is becoming more prevalent? Um, that kind of that kind of weird, kind of insane behavior, or is it something that's that's kind of you? I mean, you've been doing this for twenty years. Is it is it less than what it was, or are, are people getting like angrier on the course? Um, I don't know. That's that's a good one. I, I don't know that I see. I can notice any more or any less. It's nothing that you see see often either. It's just you know, so every once in a while, someone that's got a short temper um, usually lets it go on the co- golf course. Yeah, we, it's I, just a matter of time. So you weren't there that the day that the guy beat the hell out of his golf bag on the 18th green when we were you weren't you oh you weren't there for that one. So I'm working. Oh, the course, you're yeah, right. at, at 18th hole at Glenview, right? And the guy he he chips the ball and it goes over the green. He chips the ball, it goes back over the green, and he takes his club. And he literally beats his bag until his club breaks, oh, right? Geez. And so I'm standing there, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm laughing. I, I have tears in my eyes. I'm laughing, and, it, <laughs> and his buddy his buddy's laughing so hard. And his buddy says one thing to him, one thing. He goes, "Hey, wasn't your phone in your bag there?" <laughs> oh, and the boy. guy, I mean, he I, I I actually had to walk away. I thought the guy's I thought the guy's head was going to explode. I thought he was going to kill somebody, and I just didn't want it to be me. Sounds pretty stressed That's out. Fine. So. Yeah. So Mike, I yeah. just saw I just saw a video and I forgot who the pro was, but he was talking about um, when he learned a game of golf and everybody learns a game of golf. You're at the range and everyone's hitting their their driver and everything. But he he said that you know um, the real way to learn is like how Tiger learned when he was very young, three or two or three or four years old, just by putting around on, on the putting green. So he learned how to putt. Then his dad took him and, and learned how to chip. And then he was hitting longer iron shots, and then he went to the driver. Well, yeah, you're playing the game backwards, just playing yeah. it from putter to Because anybody, driver, yeah, yeah, and what the guy was saying was a pro. He's like, any pro can hit the ball 330 yards down the middle of the fairway. It's that 150 in and what they're going to do and how they're going to play that. It's it's the short game that matters more than anything. Anybody could put the ball out there, but you got to hit it two or three more times. Do you subscribe to that? Do you right. think that that's a good way to approach the game for people starting out? I think that's a great way. Yeah, the uh, the short game is is where you're gonna, you know, it, it's what separates everyone, uh, the best at every level. You know, the good amateurs, uh, from a, a a good amateur to a professional, it's the short game. Like you said, they can, it's not, it's not easy, but it's not as difficult to hit the ball down the fairway a, a decent amount and, and get the ball up by the green. But to get that ball into the hole, that's that's a lot tougher. Especially like the courses so that we play. Definitely important. Yeah, especially the courses that we play around here, like the county courses that are like 400, 420 yards. If you could just hit the ball 225 down the fairway, the right. rest of the way is you're like, oh, shit, okay, now i got to hit it 150 in and chip it. So, I mean, I think that's where my boys have gone wrong. They just go to the range and hit their driver all day long. And my, my youngest, my 18-year-old, can hit it. He's unbelievable. I mean, his recoil is incredible, and he clobbers it down the fairway, but then it's like I just eat him alive. <laughs> and I'm not a good golfer, well, but well, I'll shoot a five or a six, and he's shooting an eight or a nine because well, he know, can't we were, get the ball I was, there. I was commenting with Matt. You yeah. know, we go to that Desplaines driving range sometimes, and, uh, yeah, we just see people. You know, they have their driver out, which is obviously the, the longer the club, the harder it is to hit. We all know that. And you'll see some people, and they some people hit it pretty good, but it's just – 10 20 30 40 driver shots in a row shot after shot after shot and like so that's not that's not real golf because you don't do that in real life is that is that helpful is that helpful to i mean to to, to hit the same club 20 times in a row at the range uh i mean if you're working on something with it it can be helpful but yeah the the to go in and that i see a lot too with what i'm teaching is a lot of the the kids especially they want to hit the driver and 
just hit as far as they can. And well, that's fun. But yeah, the scoring, how you're going to become a better golfer and lower your scores, you got to be comfortable with the short game, anything inside of a full swing, whatever that, that shortest club is. If you play a 60 or, or a sand wedge, whatever you hit that on a full swing, now inside of that is is what you want to work on, at least for half your practice session. I think a lot of it with the, the kids now, they, it, it comes down to patience too. They don't, I mean, like a lot of the, yeah. the kids that, yeah. that my boys grew up with that I've been around and coached other sports with, I don't think they have the patience for golf. And I see it when we go out golfing together. They're very impatient. They want to hit the ball from the tee box and their next swing wants to be, they want to putt. They don't even want to play a short game. They just want to get to D- the damn green. kids these days. Uh, it's the it's you know what? I, I, I blame the school system. I do. I blame the school I blame system. They're school teachers. No, but that's I mean, that's gotta be a thing, right? Like we see it. I mean, and 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 I, I Teddy and I were talking about this the other day. They they did a little study and there is definitely a, a relationship between how close you are to the green to how well you're going to score. That I mean, at least on the PGA Tour, that is definitely a thing. There is no doubt about it. So that's why these guys, it doesn't matter if it's rough or the fairway or whatever, just hit the ball as far as you possibly can. But that, I mean, that probably makes people be really, like that probably gives them a lot of bad, um, uh, like like swing, I don't want to say swing thoughts, but it's got to make their swings really shitty if they're just standing up there just trying to fire away every single time, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's just bombs away and, and hope for the best. You're not going to usually fare well when you do that. <clears throat> All right, so, so. You, you have to be a good golfer. Is that right? <laughs> Sometimes. Hold Sometimes. on, hold on. And I'll give, you, I'll give you guys a story. This is how I know Mike's a good golfer. He was given a lesson, and Jackson worked with him at one of the camps. And he's hitting the ball out of the sand, right? And he's showing the kids. He's like, okay, here's what you do. And he walks up, and he does his thing. And he hits the ball out of the sand, and it goes right into the hole. No way. Yeah. This is the, <laughs> Jackson told me this. And Mike looks at the kids, right? And they're, I don't know, I don't know what age they were, but I know they were younger. And Mike goes, like, he goes, just like that. And I'll do yeah. that. Yeah. So, so you're. I mean, do you, do you have to be at a certain level to be a teacher? I mean, can could I be the world's worst, like physically the world's worst golfer, but the greatest golf teacher? Can I do that? Um, you have to be somewhat competent on the golf course. You you tend to well, you have to pass a playing ability test to um, get into you know depending on what kind of certification you go with a lot of them require a playing ability test so so what what level uh what level of playability test did you take my friend uh well i took the pga uh playability test it took me three times to pass it this was you know 20 years ago now but so what do you got to do um, for that wait is that your pga card it depends on the course it depends on the course but you play 36 straight holes uh depending on the difficulty of the course uh you're generally going to be around 10 over par for all 36 holes. That's your PGA card. No, no, not to play on the tour. No, no, no. I mean, just to have a... a no, 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 not to play on the tour. Just to uh, get into the, the PGM program oh, okay. where they yeah, teach you how to yeah. be an instructor. Wow, and, that and, is and, really and, impressive. And do you have to do like ongoing like certification? Like I see, I heard it's like some PGA pros, you have to do like a once a year thing where you, you, you fly down somewhere and you have to... I don't know, like some type of get ongoing... drunk, play no, with no, your no, friends, no, make fun like, of people no, like Ted. On, no, ongoing, you know, like ongoing, uh, you know, like continuing education, so to speak. You guys have to. Yeah, do that, they they know. have classes, continuing education classes, but you don't need to pass any kind of playing ability test. Gotcha. Once uh, once you pass it that first time, so you you can be great when you first do it, and then you can never practice again and be a teacher for 20, 30 years, sure. and and at one point you. You, you might not be able to break 90, sure. but you can still be a good instructor. Sure. So is, is that pretty common, or do most people – I mean, w- would it be hard for you to teach and, and like, sh- and just to show people things, just in general, would it be hard for you to teach and be bad or not great? I'm sorry, Matt. You cut out there. What, oh, what would, would, it be hard, would it be hard for you to not play well and still show people what you're doing? Um, yeah, you can, um, see like what we do a lot is we're on the range. So we'll hit, you know, if we're hitting a demo shot a lot of time, well, for me personally, it's like a three quarter wedge shot that, uh, that I'm hitting. So, you know, you can get really good at that and you can dial in that, that one shot and, and you can look like a rock star out there, but the rest of the game, you might not be able to put together anymore. I, I think, it's but, you know, that, that's just, if you're not practicing, I think it's weird that to qualify to be an instructor, you have to score a certain 
uh, you have to hit a certain score on the course over 36 holes. What if you're really unorthodox and 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 your form and everything is shit, but you're a really good golfer? You wouldn't be a good instructor because nobody could follow what you do. So you have to be, I mean, not only shoot a good score on the course, but you have to have well, no, you like te- a pretty good swing. No, you're that's not teaching. Fundamental. No, but you're not teaching them to. Sw- you know, you're not teaching people to swing like you. You know, you're not or yeah, Jim you Furyk. Are. You know, I mean, you're just because ba- basically, you know, you hear this a lot in golf. Feels not real. So you know, I think I'm doing this, but I'm really doing this, or vice versa. So. You know, I wait, guess, wait. Is that a thing, Mike? Feels not real. Feels not real. Do, do you, you say that a lot <laughs> when you're when you're doing your teaching? Because yeah. I feel like a lot of Ted's euphemisms <laughs> and phrases. No, that's a real are, thing, right? Are things that people don't hear. What, so what is you... that a thing? Uh, the exact term I've never used, but I, I get what he's saying there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so I don't, I don't want to. Ted giving an instruction. I'm not, I'm not giving. Anyone he's getting behind somebody <laughs> saying. Feels not real. Feels not real. <laughs> yeah, he's standing right behind. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question, and this is something that Jackson came up with, and I thought this was a really great question. Okay, if you had a nickel for every time somebody said this during a lesson and it would make you rich, what is that thing that you've heard a million times that if you had a nickel, you'd be rich? <laughs> what is that thing people say? Um, well, there, there's a few different scenarios it comes in up in, but uh, the term is always... Does that really count? So. <laughs> or how about don't, don't count that? Don't I love don't, it. Don't That's count great. that. Wait, what do you, what do you, you mean? Does that, that does that really count? That, well, I if uh, one example is if they're say they they have their driver teed up and we're working on their driver and they place their club down behind the ball and all accidentally knock the tee off the ball, they look up and you're like, does that does that really count when I'm out there? Or uh, sometimes we'll be taking a practice swing and they'll get too close to their ball and hit their ball straight sideways when, when they're taking a practice swing. That doesn't count, me, though. Like, does, it does it count? That really count. It does, does it? It does count. No, it does count. That, if no, it's it a real practice count. swing, it doesn't count, right? It counts. Yeah, if you hit your ball by accident, no. well, it what, We're going to ask Mike. No, Mike. Mike, it does not count, correct? Um, when you're Once that ball is in play for the hole, if you hit it on a practice swing, it does count. If you knock it off the tee, it doesn't count. No wonder you shot 80. Should have been 120. Well, wait. <laughs> Each shite that is okay so here i'll give you a scenario that i just saw today when i was i was watching some golf uh so um here you ready jordan spieth hits the ball up against a fence and he's a righty so clearly he has no chance to hit it it's it's up against the fence he could not stand there and hit it so he goes and there's a there's a a cart path right there okay so he goes hey i'm gonna hit this ball lefty but he's standing on the cart path and so he goes, I can't stand, I can't hit this ball while I'm standing on the cart path. I need a drop. And he gets a free drop. Is that a bullshit way to do a rule? Um, that's definitely in a, a scenario where you're using the, the rules to your advantage, um, which there, you can th- – that was a fair play. I mean, if that was his actual shot, he only had a shot at it lefty, then uh, then you get relief from the car path. Okay, so let me ask you this. So you're playing – so it, you don't play at all during the season, right? You never play during the season. You told me that because you're busy. Very rarely, yeah. Okay, so but in the off season, you'll go down to Florida, do something fun, go play? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so if you're yeah. out with your buddies, say you're out with your buddies, and I'm assuming you're probably like me, you're way better than your friends. <laughs> Okay. Here it goes again. Okay. If if your buddy it depends tried, on the company you keep. If is if your buddy tried to pull that bullshit where I, he says I'm I'm going to go ahead and hit this lefty and I'm standing on the cart path, I, I, is there a fight? Is there a fight ensuing? Not at all. I'd probably even give him a T if he's going to try it. Left. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just just I mean I think as long as you ask your partner, I mean whoever you're playing, as long as you ask permission, as long as you tell him what you're doing, you know. But we see this a lot too. What what, what was that term you used? Uh, uh, gl- glamour handicap or glamour? What was that term? Oh, a vanity handicap. Vanity handicap. Yeah. yeah. So you know. So yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. So you know. As you Are you familiar with that term? You know that term, right, Mike? Vanity. I have not. Heard okay. Of so so we we know a person. We know a person who's got an extremely low handicap. We know a person who has an extremely low handicap who's not. It's not real, right? So that's that's a vanity handicap. And then there's people who have. Why real, would somebody do that? You read to make it look like. Well, and... no, no, because you can look up everybody's handicap on, on the handicap thing. So a lot of people do this, right? They they will they will have a handicap. They'll only count scores, or they'll they'll lower oh, the score that they put in to make it look better. 
than than they really are. Yeah, so they're just not playing by the by the spirit of the rule. So basically, you know, it's the it's the person, whether it's a man or woman, who you know moves the ball in the fairway. You know, no, does they're anything. not doing anything illegal. They're just not caught well, certain. They well, do all sorts of things. If or, you're if you're cheating on your handicap, you're doing all sorts yeah, of or, shit. Oh, okay. Or your five yeah. foot putt is good. Good. You know, that's not. I mean, like I said, that it might be good with your buddies, but if you have to play by the spirit of the rules, or you know, kind of play prison rules, you know, and <laughs> especially if you're playing tight, tighter <laughs> courses. I guarantee you that 85 might be 105. Yeah, you know? but nobody... Even no, if they're good. No, not not from that. 95. <laughs> no. All right. So, Mike, the guys you play with, are they pretty good when you're in the off season when you're messing around? I mean, I, you play with generally, like, guys that are fairly decent? They're decent. I wouldn't... Uh, they're, they're shooting probably 80s to 90s. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, compared to the guys I play with, that's that's fantastical. <laughs> so so let's get to that real quick. Um, we sent you some videos, and they're very short videos, uh, Teddy's swing, Mark's swing, and my swing, okay? And, you know, I'm dying to do this. So give who us... T- who took your video, Matt? Uh, Teddy took my I video. I got two of them. I think it was yours and Teddy's. Thank oh, God. Oh, you didn't get Thank the... Thank la- God. You didn't get Mark's video? Yes. Ah, oh, damn it. Mark has a nice swing. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Mark has That's a nice swing. That's all right. Nice, Mark you ever has a nice see, swing. We could just... We could at limit. Have you ever seen... Uh, Dustin see. Johnson's yeah, Dustin sister. Johnson. <laughs> sister. His sister. Is that one-armed girl? No, his yeah, wife. No. I was going to say his wife. Oh, man, I've seen his wife. I have no idea if she can play golf, but you know what? She, whatever handicap she says, I, I'm in. Okay, so damn it. I, I mean, I thought I got marks, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll leave Mark out of this because really it's about me and Teddy, okay? <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and, and just really quick. I didn't give consent um, for you to videotape me, by the way. <laughs> well, you know, you, you know what, Ted? I can't say it. I, I, man, I almost said, I almost said, it's like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, so, all right. So, give us a quick feedback. What you saw on Teddy? Uh, just any anything that jumped out at you? What you saw with Teddy's swing? Uh, yeah, he actually gets through the ball pretty well with his follow through. Um, one thing I I try to have him do is make a little bigger shoulder turn in the back swing. Uh. Get a little bit more body rotation to help him probably get a little bit more power. We'll definitely help him get a little bit more power through the swing. I appreciate that because you know I've I've always been distance challenged and uh, and I know for a fact that I don't know if it's like a flexibility <laughs> thing, but yeah, I definitely don't. I can feel like I said I get a little stuck where I don't turn far back enough because maybe I don't trust it. But yeah. yeah, I think I think that's a good tip. I appreciate that. So okay. yeah, you get through the ball well though. Thank when, you. Once you uh, start making your downswing. Thank you. Yeah, you know what? That's funny. That's exactly what I said. You know, in between the laughing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you, I mean, and you couldn't be the worst person. Mike, I mean, be honest. Ted's, Ted's swing is not the worst swing you've ever seen, correct? No, not, not even close. Oh, you know what? I hate it when our guests lie. <laughs> you know what? It's not cool that you uh, No, He's no. being nice. I appreciate okay, so, so in a little bit, I, 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 you know what? And you can be, we've known each other for a while. Yeah, you know, I, I don't really know much about you because I didn't even know you had a sister. No, I did. I knew you had a sister. Um, so give some feedback on me. And and you know what? I would say be brutally honest, but in the nicest possible way. Please say quit. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you can get a pretty good swing here. Um, I'd probably have you widen your stance a little bit. And uh, it does look like you probably come over the top slightly. Do you fade the ball? You know what? I have been with the swing that I'm using now. Yeah, yeah, just the, yeah. I, yeah, trying to get a little more control because I I was a hooker, and not not the fun kind, <laughs> not the fun kind of hooker. Yeah, yeah, we know hitting draws are hitting draws are hard. I've never been. I could never draw. I was always a fader no, of the got ball. A fade, yeah. yeah, I've always. Hey, that's you slice the, the shit out of the ball. Let's be honest. You slice the shit out of the ball. It's a it's a, it's a fade. All right. So so with that in mind, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably have you make it a little bigger. Uh, well, you take the club inside a little bit in your takeaway, so probably bring that back a little straighter and, and help you kind of get in the slot coming in the downswing instead of coming a little over the top. He he doesn't want to do that, though. You do that intentionally. No, like no, you, I want I to think, get better. No, I think you could do what Mike's saying, but you don't. I will. Okay. What are you saying? I'm, I'm going to do that. He's a professional teacher. I'm not going to ignore what he says. I'm not Ted. I mean, there's some I'm great never... golfers that play fades. No, Appreciate I know. That and I think... Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I don't mind a yeah, I don't mind a fade. It's Justin one that, Johnson, I believe, is one of them. Yeah. Oh man, wait, are you are you saying maybe, that I could maybe I'll get a wife like his? Too. Right, right. Are you wait? Are you saying what's it? Oh, so yes, you are dealing with the mental aspect of this. Yes. So if I can play better, 
I can get a better wife. Yeah. <laughs> like a really hot one. <laughs> or you just oh, get a better score. Man. Let's start with that. Let's start. You know there. what? I'm, I feel pretty lucky that my wife does not listen to this show. She does not think I'm funny in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I don't think so. That's and guess either. what? Neither do we. <laughs> yeah. No, no. She doesn't think I'm funny at all. Okay. So so let's do this. If if you had one thing or or you know something simple that people could easily take and that would help kind of make them a little bit better, you know, just a touch better. If you would like, just just you know, randomly say, what is something that you think that everybody could do to make them just a little bit better? That's a good question. I know it is. Um, putting, work on their putting, definitely. I actually, I actually, I you know what? I, I'm reading. It's funny you said that. I'm literally reading uh, "Unconscious Putting" by Dave Stockton. Oh yeah. Right now, yeah, yeah. It's really, really interesting because he says it doesn't matter how you putt. He goes, but you gotta have a system. He goes, you got to have some kind of system and do a couple of different things. But, yeah, you got to have some kind of system that you do repeatedly and that will make you better. Is that kind of like like having a swing thought or like a swing system? Is that going to help? Like if, if you're consistent, is that going to help you play better? Yeah, routine, pre-shot routine. It will help, uh, help you get in the same frame of mind before every shot. It will um, it'll hopefully help the mental side of it too. If you're always keeping your mind occupied with the same routine before you hit each shot, it will uh, prevent some of the negative thoughts from creeping in there. All right. I, I like that. I, I like that a lot. All right. And dispel this rumor. Have you ever had somebody who's never picked up a club, who's just a natural and literally like like the first or second time they play, they're awesome. That's not a thing, right? Um, no, not, not that quick. Uh, I definitely, you have people that'll pick it up quicker than others based on their, their hand-eye coordination, their athletic ability, but um, not that quick. All right, on that at least same, I have. Uh, on that same note, have you ever had somebody that comes in there swinging who's left-handed, and you told them to go switch to right-handed? Because <laughs> the guy sitting to my First right, thing we tell them, they're standing on the wrong side of the ball. Yeah, well, that's that's what I said to Ted. So Ted went and he he starts swinging right-handed. I golfed right-handed for a couple of years, and actually I did. Okay. I never putted right-handed, but I actually took full swings right-handed. And actually, for a couple of years, it was it was okay, but it was it was never a hundred percent natural because I feel like I'm more of like the right arm, like almost like a backhand feels more powerful to me, you know. And it just so I never got comfortable, even though I hit some good shots. I just. I just had to think about it a little bit too much. But, yeah, I heard, like, you know, if you're right-handed dominant, you should be right-handed. If you're left-handed dominant. But then there's people who – there's exceptions to every rule. So who's, who's to say, you know? So, so. In, in 20 years, you've never had anybody that's left-handed go uh, play right-handed or vice versa? No. So my father-in-law's no. left-handed. I, ha- I have had people s- switch with putting. That's what, my, that's that's what I was going to say. Yeah, my father-in-law's left-handed, and he's a decent uh, golfer, but he's always – putted right-handed he can't putt yeah. left-handed he my brother-in-law right-handed. same thing steve yes same okay. thing with steve yeah he putts he he'll play left-handed but he'll putt right-handed yeah he's got like a dual side putter yeah and if, but if i pick up like a ping pong uh tablet or, te- or a tennis uh racket I'll, i play right-handed so it's it's weird so it's just you know it just depends on the you know on the individual you, yeah, know, you well, can't change it so. one yeah. of my one of my best friends juan he's he's right-handed does everything right-handed baseball basketball football but he golfs left-handed he started golfing in his early twenties, and he just he had the, he had a set of left-handed clubs, and he just golfed left-handed, and now that's how he golfs. Mm. Holy cow! Yeah, uh, he's, I'm not, sure good. That's, he's uh, not good. He's not good. Bill Mickelson too. He's a uh, he's, righty. Yeah, he is. But yeah. golfs lefty from mirroring his dad when he yeah. was a kid. I think that's uh, I think that's Phil Mickelson. Yeah, so, no, for sure it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know the scary part of that is he has a very serious gambling problem. So if you do that, if you're righty and lefty, I mean, he's, Ted, are you? Is there something you want to tell us? Are you? Are you? I'm, gambling? Not, I'm not good enough to gamble you're on the golf my buddy Juan. <laughs> yeah, Mickelson. Yeah, my buddy very, Juan. Yeah. All right, Mike. Uh, we appreciate you being on, man. It w- it was great to have you on. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks for the. Thank you appreciate appreciate so much for being you. on. We appreciate it. Um, if you want to get in touch with Mike, he's at Glenview Park Golf Club. Um, just in like the northern suburbs of Chicago, uh, give him a call. And, and I can tell you right now, personally, he is fantastic. Most laid back guy. He, 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 everything you do is fantastic. And uh, uh, Mike, wish you all the best. And um, just keep making, yeah, keep making sand shots in front of people and make them feel <laughs> terrible. Yeah, absolute terrible. I mean, I you, you realize, thing, I yeah, love it. yeah, for me, yeah. Guys. You realize you should miss those, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, <laughs> all thanks, right. Mike. Man, thanks, take Mike. care. Thank you. Bye. All right. All right. See you guys. Right. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. take care. Oh man, is that awesome? That was a. I mean, yeah. there's a guy that can play. Basically, I mean, 36 holes, 
you got to play ten over or better. I mean, and I there's a guy. Not never, only can you I, do I, that, I but, do but that. you've also got to teach. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there, I always heard there is a, you can't just. I mean, you can't just take like an online course to be a PGA teaching pro. Yeah. So you're not getting your PGA yeah. tour. I, card. I think there's certain there levels. Have to go to school. Well, here, I, yeah. Yeah. So, I, so yeah. you're right. No, that's what I was gonna say. That's what I meant. And and I, I think so. I know somebody who took the PGA test and he has his PGA players card. Yeah. That's that's probably different. Right. And but he he gives he gives lessons. But the problem with that is he can never play in any amateur events ever again. Ted, I, I, so so Ted is Ted brought a wedge with him, right? It, it, he, I was like holding it. It's he brought one of his like sixty degree wedges that he hits about five feet off the ground. <laughs> yeah, fifty six. Yeah. Fifty six. Yeah, that Ted. I mean, he, I, I will tell you this. One of the things I want to do one of these days is is I want to go out and I want to take some video, just to post to all of our social media, just to have people see you hit a sixty degree wedge that never gets off the ground. I would probably like do like the same like it's thing. a minus one iron. I, I would do the same thing though. No. No, it's it's <laughs> look at Teddy. He's, he's so upset. No, but about he's this. not. He he shouldn't be upset, and I wouldn't be upset. No one's ever taught us how to swing that club, right? I know one ever taught me how to golf. I just picked that's up a club. Problem, and it was so obvious. That's it's the sick. problem. I that's the problem. <laughs> he goes again. You know you know what happened yesterday, Mark? Well, I had a birdie, and then he got a birdie, but on the same hole. That is. Oh, yeah, tell, tell him the birdie. Oh, tell him the, no tell him the, tell him the birdie story. So okay, yeah. So you're finally going to beat him with no, a birdie? No, I didn't beat him. No, at you're all. ready I got, for this? I got killed. So so we're on the seventeenth hole yesterday, right? And I've destroyed Ted. Okay, <laughs> I got to give him. The, I got to give him a shot cor- a hole. Of course, uh, oh, Highland, Woods. Highland Woods. Highland Woods. Yeah. Highland Woods. So we, I got to give him a stroke a hole. I've, I've killed him on the seventeenth hole. This is the wildest thing ever. Us and the two kids that are playing, yeah. we hit four shots onto the green. Four beautiful shots. Okay, and we're right next. And we're all next to each other in a line. Right? In a line. Yeah, yeah. In a line. Okay, so the, the one kid is furthest away, and he's about fourteen feet away, and he takes his birdie putt. He misses. Ted's about twelve feet away. He takes his birdie putt, and it curves right in. Bam. Nice. And these two kids know that we, you know, we've right. been talking about the fact that we're having a contest and I kicked his ass and, you know, I, I got to do that, right? And they're just like, they're giving him high fives and all this <laughs> stuff, right? And so the kid, I'm I'm closest, so I go last. But then the next kid goes and he just misses. And now it's up to me, right? And they're just like, oh, Teddy got a, Teddy got a birdie. You got to, and I just drain that birdie puck. Oh, it was like right two feet away. There. I mean, no, just kidding. It was I about was, 10, 10, 10 feet. It was about 10 yeah, feet away, 10, but yeah, yeah it, it was, was so it was funny. that the t- it was, Here's the weirdest thing, that the two of us got birdies, right. and these two kids They're pretty are good. obviously They're pretty, yeah. more athletically gifted yeah. than we are. Wait, yeah, yeah, big time, yeah. yeah. Better, yeah. yeah, better. I was I was happy because they were not going to shit out of ball. I was happy when I was like 10 yards. Did, you, did you sneak a peek at their scores? Uh, we didn't keep their scores, but no, we're, we're I don't you keep know, yeah, we don't keep any. If we get paired up with two random guys. Like I said, the one kid fell apart. The one kid just started hitting... He barely made contact with the ball. He was just hitting dribblers for like See, that's the five, problem with, with yeah. golf. But he, played, but, he looked, with, but he looked great for like a stretch. That's, well, that's, that's what I mean. So a, lot game, of, so. a lot of times, I mean, I could look great for four or five holes, and I completely fall apart. And it's yeah. not because I'm a good golfer and I fell apart. It's because for those four or five holes, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Don't think. You can only hurt the team. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was I was golfing out of my mind because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, well, you know, turn your brain off and just have some fun yeah. out there. You know? I think that's you know that's the thing about you know taking a lesson or two yeah. to kind of help you just kind of put some thoughts into it, right? Yeah, like I like agree. lessons no, aren't going to make you; they're not going to turn a shitty golfer great. I, I yeah. I'm a well, big well, believer in that you should somehow, some way, you got to take lessons while you're on the course I, itself. I've heard I've heard this is true too. Have like to. I've yeah. heard this is true. Like no no amateur. Has ever started from scratch, and you know, other like, unless you're just like you know, have world class timing and tempo to begin with. No amateur has picked up the game late and turned into a PGA pro. That's like never happened in the history of ever. Like, no, no guy who's like right. a thirty handicapper just progressed through and got better and better. Everybody reaches a plateau, and that's probably as good as you're going to get. But that's okay. I mean, as long as you're yeah. But to be a pro, I mean, to be a pro, yeah. all these guys yeah. are starting when they're like five, six, and seven. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Spieth yeah. and Justin Thomas, they yeah. all talk about these stories about yeah. how they all played the junior amateurs yeah. together. Colin Morikawa had a swing coach when he was three. Yeah. Right. yeah. A mental coach. But yeah. but they all played in all yeah. these contests together. You're not going to be a pro. Yeah. The concept would be to play better, to not be like a massive slice into the woods yeah. and to be good and then to, to record an actual real score. Yeah. Because I feel like I, I hear our friends come up to me and say, oh, man, I, you know, I shot an 85. And I'm like, 85 what? I'm like, No. There's no way you shot an 85 anything. I'm like, no. Wait, you, on why? your best day. It, it's just that, they, you know, with only three mulligans and, you know, this oh. putt is good after I hit it six feet past and, and that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, if you really want to be good, a good golfer, you really have to be more realistic. I, right? can't, I can't golf. I, I golf with so many people. 
that are good friends and we go out there just to have fun, yeah. like I do with you guys. But I am such a stickler sometimes, well, most of the time, for, for keeping score and playing it yeah. by the rules. We want to play that way. I you know? can't stand. I'll go with yeah. a couple of guys, and it's every hole, at least two shots Yeah, are like, okay, they're they're moving the ball. They're kicking it out here. I mean, I'm talking on every fucking yeah, hole. But it drives me crazy. Yeah, but, but and then we, but at the end of the day, we score. For, yeah, if you're not playing for money, yeah, I mean, it's irritating. Why are we keeping score in the first place? Because then? Then, <laughs> then they're like, oh, I parred that. Yeah, let them. And I'm I like, mean, I bogeyed but, it. But like I said, if, if there's nothing on the line, there's going to, well, you know what? We what do you care? We, but there's people like that throughout the whole country who, you know, I, if you go on like Reddit, for example, and you go, there's like a golf subsection of Reddit where it's the same thing. Like, I play with my buddies. I play with this guy. You know, he does this, this, and this, and he ends up with like an 82 every time. And, well, you know, and it says, and you know what they say? Nobody cares because as long as we're not playing for money, you can write down whatever you no, want. No, but write here's the you point. You're, yeah. We get back to the clubhouse, and yeah. we're drinking. We're all looking at our scores, and they're all fucking happy because, oh, I shot a 92, and I shot a 99. But I'm just like, I didn't yeah. move. I fucking, I didn't take them yeah. all again. But you know, but you know what you shot. I didn't pick up yeah. any of my pots. And, 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 but, and you know what? They know what they shot yeah. too. Well, they know no, they, they don't. Too. They literally, I mean, I got an, an argument know. with them. I'm like, dude, you did not shoot a 92. Yeah. They're like, I did look at my fucking scorecard. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah, but you fucking cheated on every yeah. fucking hole. Yeah. But, like, I didn't cheat. I'm like, yes. Remember when you fucking took it and you picked it up away from that tree and you hit? That's cheating. Remember when you picked up and no one gave you it from five feet away putting? President Trump? That's cheating. Mr. Mr. Trump? <laughs> no, Joe? Joe. Yeah. No, but that's but that's the thing. That's that's what I'm talking about. Like, like if you're not playing anybody for money, right, I don't care what you say your score is because my score my score is my score. We, we played with a guy. Teddy knows. Teddy knows this guy, Tommy. We, we played with this guy, and we would go out on these trips, right, and, and we would play. And he was one of these guys that – Moved the ball every time. Right. He never hit from where he was, and every ball moved. And we just, I, and, and finally, we just said, "Listen, <laughs> listen. If we're gonna play for money, wherever the ball lands, that's where you hit it. And if you can't hit it from there, if you move it, then you, you have to count that as a stroke and yeah. just, just kind of move on, man. And it, it, it's an here, it's an integrity thing. Yeah. But yeah, don't oh, worry yeah, about yeah. it. I'll give, I'll give you an example. So, like, I'll shoot like one, like my average score. Matt's gonna laugh, but you know, like if I shoot a one hundred three, like anything below one hundred five. Are you wait, hold on a second? Are you saying you're at, no, not average. I'm just saying, but if I shoot a 103. That's I mean, a gift I shot, from God. Yeah, but listen, if I shoot a 103, <laughs> whatever yeah. I shoot, that's a real score because yeah, I'm, not, no, I'm, not taking dro- I'm not taking drops. I know. Drops. Yeah. That's I'm, why I'm I'm I like putting, golf with you guys. He rarely if, ever if, shoots if, 103. If, if, if my buddies say, <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, no like, we you, went out and yeah, you shot. Says, what, what was that when we went out? We both shot That was really a good. mini golf course. No, it was at yeah. Chevy Chase that one time you shot. I don't under, remember. You broke yeah. hundred and so. No, I don't think I ever broke hundred at Chevy Chase. I might have shot one or something. I, I did. I break. I did break hundred a couple of times last year. Where barely, was the I think course we were at with that guy that was masturbating on the balcony? Oh, that, I think it was Chevy. Yeah, yeah, that was Chevy. Chevy. Yeah. Chevy. Yeah. Were you accused? Was, I'm sorry, you accused yeah. him of masturbating on yeah. the balcony. It, I listen, thought, there were there were. Listen, he was. He was up there. He was he was butt naked. He, the guy the guy was butt naked. He was listen. Whatever he was doing, there was children was standing playing up below. Yeah. Him. Well, here, here's, 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 here's the bottom line. Here's the, here's the bottom line. Any, anyone could write down whatever they want without consequences. But at the end of the day, you're just you're just fooling yourself. You're not you're not yeah, fooling me. You're not punishing me. Like hey, if you want to see you shot seventy two, that's great. You know. But I'm, I mean, but did, is it a real seventy two or is it? Uh, I'm fine with it as long as I don't have to hand you money for your pretend yeah, seventy two. Exactly. Yeah. I'm I'm all actually you know you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to have a match between all of us with my handicap, of course. But just play you strict. Strictly by the rules, were not even like I mean, unless it's like a, a you know this far, no gimmies, you know, just just for fun. I that mean, would it would make it worse fun. for you. No, but it would be it would be fun because that way it kind of puts the pressure on all of us to perform. Where you know, there's no do overs, there's no makeups. It's like that's your but shot. But that's the way we, we play we, all we, the time. Yeah, right. We play. Yeah, we but only just, get but just, but just, but just t- tighten it up even like a little bit more. Like I know we we we're already doing that, but just like instead of like maybe just the the gimme part where you have to put out everything. Right, put out everything. No, it would take too long. It would just, it would just be unnecessarily long. I'm, I'm not oh. going to make you putt when you, you, when you're shooting for a nine. Well, I pick up. I pick up long before yeah. that. If I max yeah. out of the hole, I pick <laughs> yeah. up. I I'm wouldn't, even gonna, do, I would yeah. never do that yeah. anyway. So. Ten. No, he's talking Ten, about thirteen. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Finish that thirteen. No, we're not going to play unlimited <laughs> strokes. All right, football. listen. Before we go, I, I, I got to do this because I, I feel like this is really cool. You guys realize Ron DeSantis wrote a new book, right? A children's book? No, <laughs> no. He wrote an adult's book. He wrote a new book. There's no way he wrote a book. Uh, so hold on a second. You're not listening to the words I said. He wrote a new book. You know what that means, right? He's wrote books before. Yeah, this that's what one. I'm saying. He wrote. A, he's written in the past. He's yes, a, he's a prior he has published author. A previous yeah. book. Okay. Yes. The, the the governor of Florida has written two books. He just. In fact, I was at Costco today getting new tires, and I touched his new book. <laughs> what's I the, what's the title of the book? Courage to be free. Oh my god! 
I, I love that title. That's the greatest yeah. title ever. Sounds no, very empowering. No, listen to me. Everyone in Florida feels free to do whatever they want, except... That sounds eerily <laughs> close to John, JFK's book that he wrote. What do you it write? called? Um, uh, a Lesson in Courage or a... Uh, what the hell's it called? Something in Courage. I forgot. I absolutely believe that. Yeah, so... so Everybody in Florida probably believes it's it's it, they they're free as long as it's it's Ron DeSantis's version of free, right? I mean, it's well, we got, we can say that about anything. I mean, you're free to do no, whatever you want, but no, you know, but I mean, but if not if he, everything, he has you know, the courage so. to be free. See. So it's at Costco. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every <laughs> they sell it everywhere. But listen, if you're free, I mean, obviously Ron DeSantis's version is the free to be straight, the free to read, free to read any book at school. Except the ones that he finds to be <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. personally offensive. Free to vote unless you're black. Uh, free to study anything at school unless it's something that he doesn't want. Uh, free to commit the stupidest crimes. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of freedoms. Yeah, I'd have to delve into that. I, I don't know. Uh, anything JFK's about book's it, so. called A Profiles in Courage. What's his book called? Uh, so what's prof- it called? Courage to Be Free. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's and and it, in it he he obviously talks about um, serving in the military. Right. Yeah. He talked about serving in the military because that's a big thing. Right. Because people didn't do that. Yeah. Well, didn't didn't that mess up John Kerry? Because remember, John Kerry, like that was his big knee. He was a Vietnam veteran when he was running for president back in the day. And then I guess like, remember you heard of those like swift boat veterans for truth. I guess they came out and said like he didn't do half the stuff he claimed he did. No, in the he war. did. That was all. OK. No, he did. Oh, OK. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. But, no. but but yeah. So so he's he's writing this book and it's it's crazy to me. But he wrote a previous book. And yeah. this is the one. <laughs> What's the title no, the, this is the one. Ready? His, his oh, I see it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. So his previous book, his first book was Dreams from Our Founding Fathers. Yeah. First Principles in the Age of Obama. That's a long title. That That's was a- that was in 2011. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of I mean, I, I think of his first book as a moron's take of history. OK, so so I want you to. And this is important because I was looking through this and, and this is what makes it weird. So his basic focus in the book is that we need to go back to what the founding fathers said. Yeah. So 250 <laughs> yeah, years ago, yeah. we when need they, to go back when, when to, they still thought the earth was flat and then the uh, the sun revolved around the earth. That, that or, was a principle. Or, and, and there was yeah. and there was no anesthesia. You know, they just, you know, that that, that those founding fathers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, no. I mean, the concept of it seems really stupid. Right. And, and, and I thought, this is awesome, and it's perfect, right? So, so this is some of the things, and I, I started looking at this, and I was like, what are some of the things that people actually believed back then? So when they wrote the Constitution, our founding fathers, there was still slavery. Yeah. yeah well, they were slave owners. Yeah. The people yeah. who wrote the Constitution are yeah. slave owners. Yeah. Because it was, you know, it was common. You know, that was, the, unfortunately, that was the epoch of time they existed in. So, you know, they were only as good as the period of time they existed in, you right. know? So, so that's I all mean, they know. I mean, you got to love our founding fathers, but yeah. that still existed. Yeah. Women couldn't own property. Yeah. Yeah, women couldn't own property. Sure. I mean, is this... I mean, these are the things that we're going back well, to. Well, not only... There was only one type of person who could own property. <laughs> and that was, that was only... <laughs> only <laughs> so was, I know what you're thinking. To you're say thinking, that they couldn't, they couldn't, yeah. no. You're thinking white guys, but it wasn't even just white guys. Most men... Right. And women could not own property. I know. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. And most men and women couldn't even vote. Did you know that? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah. Most men and women in America couldn't even vote. Yeah. Right. So is, is this what is this what we're talking about, going back to the founding fathers? This is, I mean, this is what they mean. Yeah, that's well, what he well, means. Well, I mean, the, the good news is, I mean, it's one guy writing one book, and like so he, could, he could have whatever thoughts he wants, but the bottom line is, you know, time time marches on, and times change, and you have to change with them. You know, so just like, for example, I had a Betamax when I was in 1979, or a v, VHS, but they don't exist anymore. So, yeah, but, so we, have to, Ted, we have to move on from that. You know, Ted, so. I mean, I, there is a better chance than not. I mean, because I, I think Trump is. I, I saw that CPAC thing that he. Oh I saw God. his speech. Yeah. Oh, listen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was drunk when I, I watched I it, but it. Dude, I think it, he was drunk when he said it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You have to YouTube that. Oh one, my so. God, dude! <laughs> it, it, it's insane. I think he has zero chance of being there. Ron DeSantis has. I mean. I would say a ninety-nine percent chance of being the Republican I know, nominee. Actually, actually, I heard that Trump is actually leading his is There's leading no is, is the leading here, candidate here, I, to be the GOP nominee. He, no, he 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 garnered. So they do this like um, uh, I don't know what they call it. Uh, it's a type of vote they did at CPAC to yeah. see who's going straw, to be the straw poll. Straw poll. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly. Yeah, he got sixty-three percent. Trump. Trump did. But here's the catch. Out of all sixty-three percent out of of the people that showed up. Yeah. There's nobody there. Yeah. Yeah. 
DeSantis well, wasn't there. Well, you know, the straw yeah. polls don't mean there anything. There was it's nobody like, there. So the, yeah. so the person said that's very alarming for Trump that he that, that he's preaching to his people yeah. and only 63% voted for him. Yeah. I mean, straw polls don't really mean a whole lot. It's like it's like saying, like, whoever wins the Iowa caucus is the leading. You know, they say they, they make a big deal of Iowa, you know, because, as, as, you know, the first state. Yeah, yeah. And if you win the Iowa caucus. But that, that that's not an indication of anything. Like, I think Obama finished third in the Iowa caucus. He went on to win the presidency. So just because, you know, you don't win Iowa. I mean, you don't really know until the yeah, very end. No most other. of these polls are wrong. Teddy, Teddy. Most of these polls are wrong. There's, there's Winnipeg no polls. Other, listen, yeah. So here's the scary thing. I had a buddy of mine who, who's a very, you know, as far as I'm concerned, pretty level-headed guy. And he doesn't like Democrats, you know, giving all the money away and doing all that stuff, whatever it is. And he said he would actually vote for DeSantis. And and I'm telling you right now that I think this is a really bad idea. And, and, and listen, you can do whatever you want and say whatever you want, but he doesn't. Here, I'll give you an example. You know, he's, only, you know, he's to, only like 44 years old. He looks like he's 54 or 60, but he's only, he's only 44. But, but we so. talked to the Satanist last week, right? <laughs> and, and, and the one thing I asked him is, I go, I go where, where, where are you excluding people, right? And they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't exclude people, right? But he does. Ron DeSantis excludes a lot of people. Mm-hmm. He's got a negative view of a yeah. lot of people in America. And can, I, I just don't think you can have a president who has a negative view yeah. of so many different people. The, all yeah. the different kinds so, of people so, so in America. Like, so we like, just he, had one. He's like a modern day Archie Bunker. <laughs> right. Trump but was it, worse than anybody. But but right. But but that only lasted in one that time. Regard, right? That yeah. only lasted one time, and then we had to elect. Uh, uh, basically, you know, I'm just going to say this: a man who's too old, a man who's definitely too old to to represent. Ninety nine percent of America. Yeah, because yeah, he's, he's thirty years. He's yeah. thirty years removed from the average population, the average yeah. age of the population. Of course, he lives. And, and, he lives and that's, from and that's what we have. Era. But yeah. but I feel like I feel like people are gonna. You know, DeSantis is young, and it, you know whatever it is. But but I feel like he really excludes a lot of people. But you know, there's still, there's a lot of time for other candidates to come to the forefront yeah. because this was not. I mean, I, I think if you go back to um, Obama's first uh, when he first got elected, I think he didn't get involved until a year and a half or two yeah. years. Well, here's, he didn't get involved in, in in the process this early. Yeah. Well, here's here's the real bottom line. No here's the real bottom line. If you have a Republican controlled House, and he came you, out and won. You have a Republican controlled House, as you do know. You have a Democratic controlled Senate. So even assuming DeSantis or whoever gets elected, chances are he's not going to get a lot done anyway because he's not going to be able to get any legislation. <sighs> but passed. think about what we're saying. We're saying that we're going to elect a guy, and we're we're hoping that he just doesn't get anything done. That he can't do he can't do the mean. Or exclusionary yeah. things to people that he wants well, well, to do. Well, hopefully, what he'll get done, whoever's the president, not just him, will just be you know better health care, better infrastructure, uh, lower taxes, which no one's ever seemed to. They talk about it, but they never really seem to do it. Or, or there's no, you know, I don't uh, see any objective I, I don't findings hear, of it. Yeah, but I, I don't no matter hear who DeSantis, the president is, I don't hear DeSantis saying any of right. those but, things. But, but I'm saying we, we've no matter who the president is, going back, you know, you know, the last 20 years, they've all talked a good game. And once they're there, you know, they're going to tell you what you want to hear. So depending on who their target audience is, you know, just like I think uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, she had her she had her public speech. Then she oh had her my private God, speech. Shut the yeah. fuck up with that. <laughs> Wait, if did. you yeah. say that one more time, I'm going to cut your fucking head off. We're bringing, I swear we're, to God. We're, we're, we're bringing coal mining back. Here, coal you, mining's coming back. You are not allowed to mention <laughs> Hillary Clinton ever <laughs> fucking again. CNN, I swear to God. Well, if I don't do it, CNN will. <laughs> no, no one is. No one's talking about Hillary Clinton anymore. Main, she, she doesn't exist. Manny's finest. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, she grew up. For, she grew up right around here, Maine East nice. High School. Yeah, wow, okay, she, that's right. She grew up, that's I mean, right. I forgot about damn, that. Damn, I mean, she had to put up with. She had to put up with Bill, man. That was <laughs> that was that was a tough one. Slick, okay. will, slick Willie. Oh man, slick don't will. don't tell Hillary. Oh, don't okay. tell Hillary. Yeah. Hey, you know who's got to see you, know, you know, you can say whatever you want about Bill Clinton, but he's probably one of the most naturally gifted politicians of our time. Just gonna, he was like he played the saxophone. And he a had good that golfer. Yeah, that real, golfer. Yeah, that real folksy charm. You know, people eat that shit up. You know, so yeah, so they do. They, they do. And, and you know what? You know what I don't remember? I don't remember him saying anything negative about people. No, he was pretty. He was a pretty positive guy, and yeah. I think he actually got some cooperation on both sides of the aisle. But I think we live in an era of divisive politics. Like you said, goes back to the original thing. We need a third option. We need not a Democrat or Republican. We need to get rid of. Vote oh, what that Ted. for Ted. Ted. They need to vote Ted. vote them both out. Yeah, because you know you know what they're it's, they're just good cop bad cop. You know they you know there's committee hearings, there's investigations that okay we're gonna, okay we're gonna spend tens of millions of dollars investigating Hunter Biden. Okay, let's say Hunter Biden's a piece of shit, which you know he probably is. Okay, we convict Hunter Biden. How does that help us? How does that help the American people? Donald Trump goes to jail. How does that is gun violence going to go down across the country? Is is someone's taxes going to get lower? Are they going to raise the minimum wage because Trump's behind bars? I'm not going to feel safe. <laughs> you know, if it would be listen, listen. I, I I will be willing to put any amount of money that Trump will never 
go to no. jail. Yeah, and yeah. here's the thing. Along with here, here here's, him and Hunter Biden yeah. will never ever go yeah. to jail. Here's here's the best thing. In just, a billion years. Just, just don't don't elect them. You know, just if you think someone's up to no good, don't elect them to office. Simple. Vote them out. Vote them out. Not not you yeah, guys. How you many guys Kennedys? Di- yeah. Diane Feinstein. How Fein- many Kennedys? How many Kennedys that? were? Re- yeah, I got Diane that. Feinstein is eighty nine years old. She doesn't even remember who she is. She's still she's still on some committee, some Democratic committee. Yeah. She's not even I, retired. And this listen, this that's the people in their na- that's yeah. the people in her neighborhood who are voting the for her. John Fetterman, who who has a major stroke, got elected senator of Pennsylvania. Now he's in a now he's in some clinic for depression. The guy can't. The guy can't. Read. You, you know, know he can't he, comprehend anything. You know what I love about politics? He's, he's, is he's representing the people of Pennsylvania. So, so they'd rather vote against. They'd rather vote because let's just say they hated the Demo- the Republicans so much because I think that Doctor Oz was running for for Republican. He was a Republican Dude, senator he's candidate. A, he's a total fuck up. Yeah. Okay. But you know, at least at least the guy's cognizant. This guy <laughs> is 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 mentally. I mean, through no fault of his own, but he's medically challenged. You know, so he can't represent anybody. Yeah. You know, so he's not that's doing anybody best, any good. That's the best we have. That's the best you got. I think about it, think about all those races, and that's the best. Yeah. That you have there, in there's all not, there's, these there's, different there's things. There's not like one working class guy who's like you know a small business owner who couldn't do a better job than both of those two no, numbnuts put together. Want, who the fuck? Who, what normal person want to get involved in this? Yeah. You know, years and years but and years ago, want people to, went to yeah. school for this, but it cost too. And they much, worked their way up the ranks. Now it, you got people that just want well, to. It's run too for much. Congress. It costs too much money. It's, oh, it's, Madison it's, it, it takes too long. Remember, do. remember our buddy? Yeah, but I'm saying the political cycle takes too long. I think in other countries, like I think like for example, with like the elections in South Korea, it's like real quick. It's like boom, boom. Here, it's like we're talking about this for years. As soon as the president gets elected, they're already talking about who they're gonna, who's gonna be the nominee four years from yeah, now. Yeah. It's just ongoing and ongoing. It, they, well, that's a party. Like, like thing. I said, it's a problem with our like party I said, system. The, the main, the main takeaway is why would somebody spend a billion dollars to apply for a job that pays four hundred thousand dollars or four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year, which is the presidency? And it's not about helping people; it's about obtaining power and keeping that power as long as possible. Isn't Period. That, isn't that weird though? But, but so they're not, what? they're not there to help you. But listen, even if I wanted to, even if I wanted to, yeah. I wouldn't want anybody digging in my past. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. Um, did you guys hear about Mark Wahlberg? No. You guys didn't hear this? So this is the funniest thing. I swear you mean to Marky God. Marky Mark? Marky Mark. Oh. <laughs> so, so when Marky Mark was 16 years old, he stole some liquor from a liquor store. Yeah. And in, in, on his way out, he happened to punch and kick. Oh, yeah. That's all. Um, yeah, he went to jail. Yeah, yeah. He happened to punch and kick um, two Asian guys. Yeah. Right? So last week or two weeks ago, during the SAG uh, Screen Actors Guild thing, he gave away an award that was won by some Asian Americans. And they're like, the, and so this is what people posted on social media. It's amazing that he would do this after his history of racism. Yeah. And I'm like, a history of racism? He was drunk, he was 16, and he punched the two guys that owned the liquor yeah, store as he was random. trying to yeah, steal. They were just yeah. random. Yeah. So it's not that, so yeah. that if they were if they were like East African or something, he would have punched them too. They yeah. just happened to be he Asian. He just would have yeah. punched the first person he saw because yeah. he, he wants was to drunk get, and wants, trying he wants to steal. To get, he wants to get away. But but yeah. isn't that funny? Because it's something you did when you were sixteen and a piece of shit. I mean, you, everybody. I mean, if if you're judging me when I was sixteen, then I shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> I, I, I honestly I shouldn't so, be allowed to drive a so car. So what you're saying is he 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 did the crime. He did his time, and now yeah, but he has a history. Of racism. Well, I mean, here. Yeah, but now, but now, there's always going to be the cancel. It's like the cancel culture, you know, rears its it, head we, again. Oh, you know? yeah, but we were cancel talking culture, last week. Is that slut shaming? It's not the Th- same. That, thing. That's that's the new can. That's oh, the, well, okay. slut shaming is the cancel culture. Yeah. yeah, that is the cancel culture. Well, last week we were talking about crimes, and yeah. you guys wanted to put, fucking put people away for a hundred million years. No, no, we just want a hundred million. Wanted, no, we, no, just want to no, bring just, back public executions. No, we just want to we just want to euthanize people them. People stealing we money. Just, we just want to like, no. This not, guy stole money. Why? Well, why should he go to well, prison? Well, not, not ten dollars. I'm talking about like major financial. I'm just I'm just giving an example. In other oh, co- in other countries, they execute people for embezzlement. Yeah, know, That's all I'm saying. Other countries. Wait, but hold on a second. Are you saying the world wouldn't be better off with Bernie Madoff dead? I know what you're talking about. I just listened to the show before. He's dead now. Yeah, but he died of natural causes. And. <laughs> scene. Well, oh, I don't. I don't know. Really, see, I, it's funny. I don't even. Oh, pay did you watch yet. that documentary about Bernie Madoff? Yeah. yeah. No, but oh. now that I know he's dead, I will. <laughs> they, they execute people for drug smuggling in Malaysia. Like if you're caught with a certain amount of heroin, you know, and yeah, me, you might yeah, not agree with it, bad, but but the point is, they're just smuggling small <laughs> amounts of heroin, really bad, yeah, or whatever it is, you know. But the point is, stuff here that you get probation for, they will execute you in other countries. I'm not saying I'm not condoning it necessarily. In Saudi Arabia, they'll cut your hands off for stealing. Well, I mean that's. Yeah, but Saudi so Arabia extreme. is really fucked up. They are is really it horrible. They have no human Saudi rights. Arabia, it's, it's, listen, it's yeah. the worst. Oh listen, Saudi God. Arabia is really fucked up, and I know it's it's, it's Women's History Month, and and yeah. I, I I I think I texted you guys that um I, I want to get some some women on to talk about some different things. I mean, hold on, let me grab this. Oh, 
I could do my my girl voice. Hold on. Um, so so there's this thing called girls, not brides. Now I don't know if you guys know this, right? But there are um, people who are uh, girls who are being married, forced to be married at very very young ages. And there's like uh, wait where uh, all across the world. Oh, okay, yeah, all across the world. Yeah. Taliban. So there's a group called there's a group called Girls Not Brides that are trying to stop this, trying to outlaw it. And even though it's outlawed, obviously, you know, people break the wait, law. These are American. It's trying to go in other countries. It, well, this. it's people from all over the world. Okay, people okay. from all I over the you. world that are trying to stop this. And okay. there's another group called uh, UN Women that are trying to help women. Sure. And what's this other? Zanta International. And all these groups are working to help women to, you know, be empowered and do all that stuff. And that's yeah. that's where you know, like Saudi Arabia. I, I, I agree, I agree that you know, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, so, here's what here's what I like. But I, was, I was I was no, I was Americans no, doing. No, this. I was I wasn't no. confl- I wasn't conflating, no. you know, the suppression of women's rights with, you know, crime and punishment. You know, I understand right, it's right. intertwined. I'm just saying that we have too many bad actors walking around the streets with impunity who have multiple felony convictions and they know because they've been arrested multiple times that nothing's really good. there's no consequences yeah. for their actions that's all i'm saying you know yeah. so i'm just saying if th- they, those people are those people are small potatoes to the people that are doing these things internationally yeah. i agree you know with the, with the human trafficking and all that kind yeah. of stuff and it, it's it's really really important well, the, the that, that we that we focus on what's you know the big picture right the yeah. big picture yeah. and there's there's too many times that we're so focused on what's happening in our neighborhood yeah. that we kind of lose track of this right? right until it affects us until yeah. we get that peace it has to be like what you said. It was it uh, girls, not brides. Girls, not brides. So, a campaign like that it needs to be a worldwide campaign, right? right. It just can't be uh, America. We do a lot, but we also get involved in stuff, and it gets like, uh, uh, here the Americans are, you know, over uh, this and that. But when other countries get involved in it because a worldwide campaign, I think it means a lot more, and I think it goes a lot further. Well, no, that's th- what's great about that. What you're saying, other countries are like, hey. Oh yeah, this thing is yeah. this thing is really big, especially in a lot of countries yeah. where they have, uh, you know, uh, here I'll just say where they have a Muslim religion where the women have less rights, right? Where 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 they're they're treated as I, I wouldn't even say second class citizens yeah. because if you can't leave your house yeah. or you can't leave your house without being covered from head to toe yeah. well, without like your Afghan- fucking eyes, yeah. Afghanistan, yeah. But, right? Yeah. Now. It goes back. That's, that's not real. But, that's that's but, not real, yeah. and those aren't rights. Here, here I'll give right. you an example. So Iran, there's a lot of good people. They're probably they're probably Westernized like us, but because they live under the oppressive the oppression of the of the uh, of the you know Ayatollah Khomeini, the who, Taliban, so, so you have this. Yeah. It's not the Taliban. It's uh, it's because uh, the Taliban's Afghanistan. I'm talking about Iran. So I'm just saying a lot of people are you know they're like us. You know they go to cafes, they go out, they want to learn stuff, they want to be progressive, but you know you have this repressive you know um, you know religious regime that's basically from the Stone Age. You know yeah. who has who's basically controlling the whole population. So if you got rid of them. You know, we're not like the Iranian people. They're good people. It's just that oh, yeah. small I know, group. I know. Well, it's con- government. Who's controlling? Yeah, it's not who's people. It's government. Them. Same thing with but China. You, but it's you can't. Not but the you people, can't. You it's can't, the government. Yeah, but you can't get rid of them. You know, because you can't. Because just logistically, they're they're too far away. And of course, if you nuke them, it's going to start. You know, it's going to start a whole you know onslaught of things. <laughs> you know, you nuke Ted, you yeah. can't just nuke a country. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm saying you can't. But I'm saying, but you, they have to get rid of those people from within somehow. I mean, you know, I'm second guessing now. Well, yeah, actually, we you You're second guessing the nuking. No, I'm second guessing that. I do want you to. We are going to have you run for president. Yeah, but you're you're not. You can't have the new code. No, that's no, fine. No, no, I'm, Mark. I'm, Mark, you you and I will. Well, doesn't he have a? Con- <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the president have a council? Um, no, um, the guy here's uh, a football. He has a he has a four star general that carries a football, which is the briefcase oh, yeah, that yeah, has the nuclear yeah. codes in it. So yeah, with a, yeah. it's handcuffed to his wrist. You know all that good yeah. stuff. What, you know, whatever so. it is, Ted, I'm not going to let you. I'm, when you call it in. <laughs> here, whatever. What, what, do you, what do you call it? What, what do you call the the the, the group the president has? Uh, his, the, it's not the presidential council. I can't inner, even think of the inner circle. I don't know what I, whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever it is, Mark, we will make That's sure true. that when Ted says, Ted says, bring me the briefcase. Right. We just tell the guy, yeah, don't, 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 don't do it. Hold on, let me let me give him two more drinks. He means the backgammon briefcase. Yeah, yeah. Let me give him two more drinks and just forget about. Oh, it. the football guy. He's got the day off. He's, he's not available. Yeah, but I mean that's that's I mean that is just you know, yeah. and I, I hate to bring you know bring it down or bring it whatever, but but these are some of the things that w- w- what I'd like to do is you know in the next couple of weeks is is and, and not even you know what and and not even during that you know Women's History Month is, is just kind of a thing, but but kind of bring some of that to light and bring some of that out because I don't think enough people pay attention to it, right? Yeah. Like if you're not watching NPR or you're not watching watching CNN or whatever for a long period of time, you're never going to hear about this stuff, but yeah. you need to, right? Yeah. I mean, it's real sure. and it's happening. Yeah. So and, March and, is women's 
March is Women's History Month. Yeah. Okay. So right. here, yeah. so okay, okay. I'm, not, I'm not sticking up for Ron DeSantis, but okay, let's just say, and don't, I, I, I don't, don't, I, no, I don't, we will I, actually I, fight. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what his politics. Okay, like, yes, you do. Well, not not all his politics, but let's just say he's 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 um, you know um, you know excluding certain groups. You know, like for example, you know, I'm not going to name any specific groups, but like I said, there's other countries. You know. <sighs> That will kill those groups for being just who they are. So, but so that doesn't, we got to keep that. that we got to keep that in context. Because, you know what? Be, we'll kill them. But you know? but but if you're if you're half of the asshole that somebody else is, you're still you're still an asshole. Of course, of course. But but okay. um, but it's not going to affect. I mean, like just because one guy ha- harbors those thoughts, even if he becomes president, realistically, there's no, he's not going to be able to pass any type of laws that are going to you know be discriminatory against the whole group of people. He might you don't have, know that. You know, he might try, but I, I don't think he'd make it. I mean, let's he, just He's he got his little bullshit president. crew. He's got his yeah. little bullshit crew, Matt yeah. Getz. He's got his bullshit crew, uh, yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. He's got all those people. Listen, listen. God, they are. it's so hard not to say you know, the you, R word when you say those people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't do that anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. I know what you but, mean. but listen, yeah. listen. It, it's like that book. and I'll, I, it's, it's like that, 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 that book about the Holocaust, right? And I think it's like Not Me, right? Mouse. Yeah, with with a with a is that the one with the no 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 the cats no, he's talking about a different the one. one with the animals right where where you know they come and they they take all the the the, the squirrels away yeah yeah and then and, and then and then the rats and the the rats are just like Man, I don't give a shit they took all the squirrels away yeah. it's not me right and then they come by and they take all the rats away yeah. and then and the bunnies are like oh who gives a fuck as long as they're not coming after the bunnies yeah and then they come after them yeah. right because it's 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 that yeah. thing if we don't listen if yeah, we don't right. make an effort yeah. if we don't make an effort it's everybody every that's day, not like them right <laughs> if we don't make an effort every day to just say man stop doing this shit yeah okay this is an unacceptable yeah. you can't do this anymore yeah. right like you we're not going to stand for you to to outlaw this or to outlaw that things that people can do every day mm-hmm. then then we're we're failing yeah. we're failing if we let ron DeSantis become president and start excluding people and again i bring it back to the satanism thing where's your exclusionary and they're like we don't have any if we let people exclude people then we're failing. Yeah. Well, I think you just got to take the religion out of politics, you know. But it's not even religion, yeah. man. Or whatever. It LGBTQ. Is. Yeah. None of that's none of that stuff is religion. Yeah. No, I think right? no, but it's no, but it's rooted. No, no, but it's think, rooted. Yeah, it's rooted. Think, it's rooted in he's that. He's right. Like the Santis and those a lot it's of rooted values in that. are rooted in. It's rooted in that. The yeah. religious beliefs and they're yeah. trying to Im- impose it on everybody else yeah. and they're trying to. So basically, he's yeah. you know, Ron, he's trying to impose his a personal. A lot of it's a secular. He's trying to impose his personal belief system. Upon other people who he doesn't agree with philosophically, right? And we can yeah. we, we we can say that for a lot of people, you know. But right. but the good news is we're so diversified in this country that no one group, unless it's literally like an armed insurrection, could ever is never going to gain that much control to do that. But I, I I know what you're saying though. I know what you're saying. So I think I think the analogy you're saying is that you know they came they came for this. I never, I didn't say anything. They came for that. I didn't say anything. Right. And then they came for me, and there was nobody there to talk on yeah, my behalf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, yeah. that's who what the you're fuck's saying. protecting me? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Sorry, man. I, 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 you know what? I've been talking to these different people from these different women's groups and stuff, and trying to get them on the show. And and of course, you know, I mean, we're called the real three idiots, so you know, yeah. it's 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 it's, kind it's of a, tougher. We got two strikes against yeah. us. <laughs> it, it's tougher. It's tougher than NPR. I, I'm pretty sure when NPR calls, I'm pretty sure they're like, "Yo, you're you're NPR. Do you have any idiots?" And they're yeah. like, "We have zero. Well, zero well you know what? I'm I'm not even taking you seriously uh, once I hear the name of the real yeah. three idiots. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. We have uh, zero idiots, and we talk much much slower. But, and they're much calmer. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's put this thing to bed. Um, Mark, last thoughts. Remember, we well, talk mostly about I'm, golf. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, that's that's my last thoughts. Are I feel like I got ripped, gypped by sending you a, a video of me swinging, and you didn't even give it to Mike, so Mike doesn't analyze my swing. So here's what here's what we'll do. My final thoughts no. are. I've already I quit I've, golf. I've analyzed your swing, Mark, and uh, it's perfect in my yeah, book. Yeah, thanks, just keep, do, keep no, doing it. No, I will. You know, here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. Maybe I'll, this is played out by those two. Hey, let's not talk about Mark's swing because it is fucking perfect. How that guy shoots 100 every time, I have no idea. Yeah. It's in his head. No, so <laughs> you know what I'll do is I'll make sure that he gets it. I thought he got it, but I'll make sure he gets it, and we'll get some like maybe more no, in-depth he, I'm stuff. I'm just kidding. Some he more person. No, no, no. Well, here's I, my final I, I wanted thoughts. him to laugh at you. Here's my f- final thoughts regarding golf. Just have fun with it. Don't cheat because the score doesn't matter. Just go out there and play. Have fun with your friends. And don't take it too serious because I nobody wants to golf with that guy that's beating up the fucking bag with his phone. <laughs> Unless his phone's Dude, <laughs> nobody wants to Nobody wants to, to, to golf with Mike Ditka. And nobody wants oh. to golf with those kind of hotheads just because they're not. Or you know what? If you, you just know, would, you what, know, what, honestly, Ted, what do you always say about being on the golf if course? If you just would have chipped it on the green, none of this would have no, happened. I, what do you always say when someone's getting mad? 
I don't know what I say. You always <laughs> say uh, a bad day on a golf course beats a, oh, good, a good day in the office. Yeah, good day yeah. in the office. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I'm. You the first say that 18 times. I'm, okay. Well, you know, because I mean, yeah, it's because he's having such a bad day on the golf course. <laughs> no. no, but that's true. So you know, that, that's, for sure. That's yeah, it. just have some so, fun with it. Yeah. That's 100 percent true. All right, and, Ted. And I won't even tell the story about the guy, our buddy Joe, who literally took a flag out of the hole and javelined it. I saw him do it twice. He, he was picked. He, he was so mad. He took the flag out of the Dude, hole on the green. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. And he he kind of throws like a sissy boy. <laughs> yeah. He javelined it about, I don't know, about 30 yards. It was. Well, he was trying out for the Olympics. I saw him do it twice. It was, it was <laughs> two of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. All right, there Teddy, last thoughts. Um, you know, thanks, Mike Stone. My swing wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, unless you were just being polite. I appreciate that. So, And let's be all inclusive, by the way. So, Yeah, I, I agree. Let's be all inclusive. Lots of people just like Ted suck. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Actually, the funniest thing, just real quick. So I was reading this article in Golf, the Golf Magazine, and it says, what do you do when you're playing with a really good golfer and you're not a good golfer? What do you do? So there's tips like they say, don't say good shot after every shot. Um, there's a few other things. And then at the very end, it was like so passive aggressive. It said, it goes, it goes, just because you're not a good golfer doesn't mean you're not a good person. <laughs> Which is just the opposite the funniest, of Ted. Yeah. the funniest thing. So, so I, I reminded Teddy that we were going to have a golfer on, right? I reminded Teddy we were going to have a, a golf expert on, and he told me a story about uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas. Oh, yeah. Now, this Michael is real. Douglas, this is real, yeah. Michael Douglas is like 85 years old, right? Yeah, he's and, like 105. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, he's And Catherine yeah. Zeta-Jones, they play golf together. And this is what Catherine Zeta-Jones told people. She told people that when Michael Douglas hits the ball and he doesn't get it past the women's tees, and it's called, it's called a dick-out shot. Everybody knows it. If yeah. you play golf, it's a you say it, but I mean, obviously, right. nobody does it, right? You don't hit past women's tees. Catherine Zeta Jones says she actually might, t- she actually makes Michael Douglas pull his dick out. Teddy and Teddy's telling me this, and I go, yeah, I go, but he's playing with his wife, so if he right. pulls it out, I mean, and, and supposedly they're only like he does. She doesn't do it in front of like other people. She just doesn't when it's just him and her. So, so I guess it's okay to humiliate your husband if it's just one on one. But just not imagine in front of being other stuck on a golf course with those those two fucking idiots in front of you. <laughs> you know what? Eighty five year old guy and, and well, his, we never, you were no. never you were never stuck by him because they were probably always playing private. You know what the greatest clubs. story here? And this is my final thought. The greatest golfing story you could ever tell, even if you got ten holes in ones, was that you played with Michael Douglas oh, yeah. and Catherine Zeta Jones. <laughs> And he hit a terrible tee shot, and you watched Michael Douglas pull his dick out, and, and walk, you got to see to his ball. Yeah, you got to see Michael Douglas's dick. A that shri- would a be shriveled up baby elephant yeah. trunk. That would be the greatest. Does she thing. have to pull out her dick when she doesn't hit? <laughs> well, hers is probably bigger than his. That's for sure. It is. That's no. It's not a know. thing. Okay. But that would be the greatest <laughs> golf story in the history of golf stories. And with that. We will leave you till next week. Enjoy. Have fun. Um, listen, whatever sport you play, play it. Have fun. Um, enjoy it with And keep every- your dick in your pants. Yeah. No matter what you do, <laughs> keep your dick in your pants. <laughs>